Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our budget meeting for March 21st, 2024. In the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge the town of Edson is located on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional and ancestral lands of the Nikawak, Soto, Siksika, Pakani, Kainai, Dene, Nakota Sioux, and the Atissimis-Pissimwak Métis Nations. We honor the knowledge of this land, the elders and youth which gather here, and our ancestors who have gathered here for centuries. Can I get a motion, please, that the agenda for the March 21st, 2024 budget meeting be adopted as presented? Go ahead, Councillor Chouinard. I'll make the motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, please vote now. And that motion is carried unanimously. Uh, before I take the next motion, I just want to explain the process that we are going to be undertaking tonight. So we will take a motion to introdu introduce the 2024 operating presentation. Uh, then staff will go through uh, the agenda items. Um, at the end, we will take a vote on that. And then if there's any changes that council would like to make, uh, motions will be accepted after that point in time. So um, as we're going through this, if there's something that you do want changed, uh, start noting down which motions you would like to make during the meeting. Um, with that, I will take a motion that council accept the introduction of the 2024 operating budget presentation. Go ahead, Councillor Taylor. I so move. Thank you. And we will hand things over to CEO Beveridge, who will introduce this item for us. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, as, as before you, um, you have a draft operating budget. Um, as you know, we passed a uh, interim operating budget uh, in 2023, and that covered 50% of the previous year's uh, budget, along with investments in staffing resources. Tonight, um, we'll go through um, this operating budget um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the preparation of this budget. Um, there was a comprehensive review uh, completed um, that allowed for um, staff to really um, go through each cost, cost center um, and you know, identify areas for savings, um, as well as um, looking at our actual um, historical um, uh, totals from previous years. Uh, we also reviewed the financial pra practices to re uh, ensure compliance with the town's uh, financial policies and, of course, uh, in ensuring alignment with our strategic plan. This introduction um, will include an overview of the process, uh, key budget highlights, introduction of uh, budget requests, along with an overview of each department's budget. Each GM will introduce the budget by explaining the programs in, and the services in each area and how it supports our residents. The other key item is that the changes uh, from budget, um, substantial changes will be spoken to um, by the HGM. As we hit the, the page with regards to this, the budget requests, um, essentially um, HGM will present and provide rationale for the budget requests. Um, and I do encourage the, the questions at that time for that item so that to ensure that there's a full understanding of what we're requesting for budget. So with that, I will now hand the presentation over to Dave McReynolds, our Senior Municipal Finance and Management Consultant with TSI, as well as Leah Sadigian, our Finance Manager. Thanks, Christine. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to discuss the 2024 operating budget. I just wanna make sure you can see it on the screen, uh, my presentation. Yes, we can. Excellent. <clears throat> Uh, first off, I would like to echo um, uh, CEO Beveridge's uh, comments about uh, the staff <clears throat> who contributed to the budget. Uh, we went through two rounds of uh, budget uh, deliberation. We went through cost, uh, each cost center line by line, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really a thorough review and where we could save money, we could, and when we had to adjust due to actuals, we did. <clears throat> Uh, general managers, finance staff, sports staff all contributed to that budget process, and I'd like to thank them personally for their su support. Uh, Mayor and Council, we're, we, we're not seeking the approval of the budget this, this evening, but it's an op what we're giving is an opportunity for Council to review the operating budget uh, and to make any changes that they would like to see in the budget before we come forward at, at the mill rate bylaw with the final budget. So it's kind of a, a budget review meeting and we're looking for your comments and, and, and recommendations. 
And please feel free to ask any questions along the way. Um, uh, we can stop and answer questions at any time. So here's our agenda for this evening. Um, I'll be speaking to the first five. Uh, and Christine kind of kind of went over them, uh, so I won't really reiterate them uh, uh, on, on what's going to happen. Uh, but I'll be speaking to a little bit about the highlights and reserves specifically. And I just wanted to, for the people at home and the people in the room, uh, that the, there are four reports given uh, as a budget package. The first one is a summary report. Mm -hmm. um, it's a one-page report by summary account. It's a nice report. It's a snapshot of the entire budget on one page. It shows the 2024 budget versus the 2023 budget with a variance. Mm -hmm. So it gives a really good overview of a budget to budget on a one page by account. The second report supports the summary uh, report. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in digging in a little bit on one of the numbers in the summary report, look to the detail report. It breaks down that summary number in all the individual uh, uh, accounts mm -hmm. that are included in each one of those uh, summary roll ups. The third report is a two-page report, and it shows all the same financial information that's on the first two, but it shows them in a different roll-up. It shows them by department. So it shows basically the service levels that the town provides um, uh, and, and the revenues and expenditures year over year uh, for each of those services. And finally, a divisional report uh, that shows a bit of the roll-up uh, of the new alignment uh, year over year. So some of the budget highlights, um, the budget is balanced. Um, it's a good thing. Uh, it's balanced and all the reserves uh, uh, that are in policy that council's approved are included in that budget. We have no fee increases uh, recommended in this budget. Um, all of the fees are held constant at the 2023 level. Uh, there's a 0 0.5 tax uh, percent increase uh, in the budget. Uh, this is as per the reserve policy uh, as the, the reserve contributions increase by half a percent year over year. <clears throat> Council invested in salaries and benefits in the interim budget and that variance uh, is 633,000. You'll see that as one of the, the major variances on the report. It was approved in interim budget. Included in that is the cost of living uh, and merit increases, uh, the additional staff members that were included plus an increase uh, to the employee benefits. Okay. Excuse me. Also, there was a new way of uh, allocating uh, general manager and manager salaries this year. Um, there was a realignment and there was new general managers and they determined how their salaries and support of their salaries would be spread across the areas that they manage. There was a difference from 2023 to 24, 24 and of course that, that causes a little bit of variance as well. And you'll see those variances as they go through each one of the of, of the cost centers. So you'll see it, a, a, a comment about reorganization or reallocation, and that's really what's driving uh, uh, that. It's, it's a, just a reallocation of the GM and manager salaries. <clears throat> and then finally, there's seven new budget requests for council's consideration. <clears throat> so on the screen is a summary report. Um, uh, hang on one second, please. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Councillor Chachka. Thanks. Uh, through the chair to Dave, um, just can you offer some a little bit of clarity on how the GM salaries are reallocated? Is it something that is reviewed every year and then it changes again every year? Or uh, is it just based on where they spend their time uh, and, and efforts? Um, like, like I'm, so I'm wondering, is it going to be consistent going forward or um, is it something that always changes um, every every year? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor, yes, uh, it is different this year. Uh, ideally, it would be the same every year, but there's a new group of general managers uh, and a new re reallocation, a reorganization uh, of, of, uh, of cost centers under those GMs. So, uh, uh, a process was undertaken this year to determine how much GM salary should be put to each one of the cost centers that they're that they lead, and it is different than 2023. Uh, it is causing some variances, and um, those will be spoken to as a reallocation. But ideally, uh, councillor, it should be the same year over year. Uh, it, it just it just makes for less variances. Thanks, Dave. You can continue on. Okay, uh, 
So this is the summary report I spoke to. It's the one page snapshot of the of the recommended budget versus the approved budget from 2023. Uh, you'll see we're balanced and that um, both revenue and expenditures are reduced uh, by 1,984,559. Both of those reductions are based on reserve contributions primarily, less contributions uh, transfers from reserve and less contributions to reserve. Um, and you can see that in the other transactions in revenue and expenditures. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the reserve transactions. Um, we, re we reviewed the, the council's reserve policy and what council requires uh, in each budget to be transferred to operating capital reserves. Uh, only those in policy are in this budget uh, outside of a couple other uh, 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 reserves uh, contributions that I'll talk about. So reserve contributions are included as per policy. Uh, reserve contributions to balance utility funds. So it's nice to think about tax funded programs and utility funded programs. They're, they're, they're two different funds <clears throat> from different revenue sources, property taxes and utility funds. So um, if there's a surplus of funds in water or sewer, we transfer those funds to reserve to balance that to a utility reserve uh, just so that there's no cross subsidization of tax funding and, and utility funding. And you'll see that as we go through the, the budget tonight. <clears throat> um, there is a land, a subdivision land uh, uh, cost center where they budget for some land sales. And those land sales, if they do occur, uh, are not brought into the budget as a revenue source, they're transferred to reserve. Uh, uh, so we transferred and balanced the land fund as well. Uh, part of the process uh, of, of uh, operating a, a, a landfill is you have to require a post-closure liability reserve, and there is a transfer to reserve uh, for the closure and long-term maintenance of the landfill, and then a general transfer reserve uh, to balance uh, the budget. So on the screen are the uh, six transfers from reserve. Um, they are all to fund one-time projects. Uh, I'm not going to go through them, but there's $607,500 transferring from reserve to these cost centers for these projects. And as we go through the budget and the GM speak to them, they'll be talking about those as well. Uh, transfers from reserve. There's 22 transfers from reserve totaling $4,146,521. I think you mean transfers to reserve? I'm sorry, transfers to reserve. My apologies. Transfers to reserve. Um, these transfers to reserve are for transfers uh, to balance utility and land funds. Transfers for the medical clinic uh, and landfill that are required. Uh, transfers as per policy for operating reserves and capital reserves, and the general transfer reserve to balance the, the, the budget, totaling $4,146,521. Okay, Dave, so we're just going to pause 20. for, sorry, we're just yeah. going to pause for a second, see if anybody has any questions at this point. Sure. Anybody? Go ahead, Councillor Chachka. Thanks, uh, through the chair to, um, I think, administration on this one. Um, so my question is regarding the transfers to the operating and capital budgets as per reserve policy. Um, what was the methodology used to determine the, the numbers, uh, the amounts that were used for the transfers? I can answer that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Um, so each reserve has an optimum balance um, in policy, um, and if that reserve balance was sitting below that optimum policy, we took a, a one a five year approach to get it to its optimal optimal balance. So if it was short a hundred thousand dollars, we contributed twenty thousand dollars this year. Thanks, Dave. Any other questions, Council? If not, we will move on. Okay. Uh, there are six. Uh, offering budget requests for council's consideration that are not included in, in the budget. Um, uh, maybe I'll pass it to the GMs uh, uh, or Christine and they can speak to them uh, one by one. 
All right, uh, CEO Beverage. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, each GM will uh, are aware of their uh, budget requests for their division. So I'll allow um, Mr. Doug Wag Wagstaff to start the process for Deputy Fire Chief. Go ahead, Mr. Wagstaff. Through the Mayor to all of Council. The uh, first one that I'm speaking to today is a Deputy Fire Chief. <clears throat> the Deputy Fire Chief will assist in the daily operations of the fire services as well as playing a key role in emergency management of the town. This position will focus on operation level planning, tactics, and training. The frequency and number of calls is continuing to increase for the department. With that comes a challenge for response, coverage, especially during regular office hours during the week. A deputy position would provide a needed operational redundancy to provide a work-life balance for the fire leadership. Currently paid on-call duty officers fulfill backfill coverage in the scheduled absence of the chief. This will remain as an additional level of coverage, but relying on this model for any extended period is not sustainable. This new position with assistance of the fire chief will develop, plan, implement, and conduct annual fire and life safety inspections of all eds and businesses. This will take a couple of years to begin to implement, so there will still be a carryover of some contracted services. Fire and life safety inspections by the Alberta Fire Code are conducted annually in all kitchen, high life hazard, high occupancies, schools, and daycares. There are an estimated 150 buildings to be inspected annually, and other businesses are to be inspected at 24 and 36 month intervals. A deputy chief position will provide the town a proactive approach instead of the current reactive approach. The overall budget impact for the position, including salary, benefits, PD, phone, etc., is $111,000 a year in the first year of 2024, being that we are nearly halfway through the year. A half salary, sorry, a half uh, year all in would be 58,300 in the first year and then a base 111,000 in subsequent years. What would happen if this funding is not approved for this new position? Due to the significant number of fire inspections needed within our community, if fire inspections are maintained on only an as needed basis, this will lead to some increased liability, a lack of occupant safety and potentially life-threatening situations. It is the duty of the municipality to ensure proper and effective inspection schedule is maintained to ensure the safety of all businesses and the public that attends them. The ongoing demands and requirements for emergency management will continue to impact the workload of existing staff, limiting the full potential of our emergency management program. Additional full-time staff and protective services with the workload and sustaining efforts in, in emergency management uh, will be an added benefit for the overall organization, not just the fire department and protective services area. And that is the, the proposal as presented today. All right, thank you, Mr. Wagstaff. So we'll open the uh, floor to questions on this uh, budget request. Go ahead, Councillor Chouinard. Through the mayor to uh, Mr. Wagstaff. Um, I noticed you said fire ins uh, inspection. I'm just curious, right now we use a third party what does that cost us? Because I'm, I'm feeling what you're saying alarmed about the inspections and I know I had one done and I was shocked to go through a third party. I just wonder what the cost of that is. Go ahead, Mr. Wagstaff. I had that number and now it has escaped me. Um, I may ask Leah if she can uh, just help us with that. I, I believe it's 32,000. Per inspection? No, not per inspection. Oh, I don't know the cost per inspection. I thought you meant the overall cost no. to the town okay. for contracting out that service. I don't know the fees uh, that we charge out for that. It is it is not full, full cost recovery, however. Okay, so we'll uh, look up that number and uh, we'll, we'll answer that later. Uh, Councillor Chachka. Uh, through the chair, that, believe it or not, that was actually my question as well. Oh, okay. You and Councillor Chouinard are on the same wavelength. Perfect. Councillor Prasichny. Worried about fires. <laughs> yeah, th through the mayor to Mr. Wagstaff. Um, I, having firsthand experience with the fire department, uh, definitely support um, the deputy fire chief. Um, it is much needed. And if we go back to 2005 report, uh, at that time it was identified 
Now you gotta remember that's 2005. It's almost almost 20 years ago. We that that time the report recommended that this community should have a full time chief, full time deputy, and a full time training officer. Um, so this is a much needed position. We've had it in the past, and I, I definitely support it. Um, but I guess I guess I'm going a little further into the fire and if, if wondering. Well, there's a request for the deputy, but has there been a request for um, the AFRAX radio system? Has that been discussed at all within your departments? It has, and that is a th sorry through the through the mayor to Councillor Pasichny and Council. Uh, that has been a discussion. That's a capital expense, uh, so that is one that we are currently working on uh, as a 2025 capital expense. Okay, um, so follow up. Yeah, please. Then through the mayor, then to Mr. Wagstaff. Um, in light of what happened last year, um, it was a little embarrassing when Edson couldn't communicate with their neighboring communities um, when they came to support us. Um, we had to borrow radios from government agencies so that we could communicate at the provincial level. Um, and in the community is still on edge for wildfires, and um, we're beholden to a county system that even the county has AFRAX radios. So I think maybe if there is possibility, we should look at, uh, I, 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 I it's capital, so I'm not on topic right now, but I think it should be something we should consider for 2024 um, just because um, it didn't really come to light until we had the wildfires this year. So, If I can just maybe mention, maybe there's an opportunity to uh, relay with our uh, provincial counterparts to see if we can have some available just in case. Because I know they do have a supply of radios that they do lend out in the interim until we figure this out. Carol. It helps. Okay, uh, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to uh, Mr. Wagstaff. I I'm sorry, I'm a little confused on the, 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 the carryover. So are you saying we would hire a deputy fire chief, but we still have contracted people and how long would that process or carryover have to take? I guess I'm confused about, about that. So what, through, uh, through the mayor to Councillor Taylor, uh, one of the things that we recognize is uh, the current practice has been on an ad hoc, as needed basis. Uh, it hasn't been on a regular maintained schedule. In order to catch up, uh, that, that's going to require uh, some assistance by uh, a contractor as well. Uh, so that we can get caught up. And once we get caught up, within a year to a year and a half is the anticipated uh, look at that as we've done the initial looks, um, then we're able to maintain it. And with the existing, if this was approved, with existing resources, we'd be able to maintain a, a regular schedule. All right. Councillor Taylor? Now I just forgot my follow-up in the middle of that because I queued something, but I will, if I remember it, I will remember my follow-up question to that but thank you all right thank you um, I'm certainly in support of of this request I've, I've thought about this a lot since I've seen and heard that this would be coming forward um, and I had a review of other municipalities fire budgets and we are I think very frugal within our fire department um, I do question um, the fire department continuing to fill the gap for EMS coverage in this community uh, which I think is a different conversation for a different time. But um, in order to have some redundancy um, and, and some backup coverage, as was noted in your presentation, I certainly am in support. Uh, Councillor Trotchka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the chair to uh, Mr. Wegstaff. Um, it may, maybe mentioned it and I just misheard it. Um, do the businesses currently have to pay for their own uh, fire inspection when the third party comes out for it? Um, or is that something that is just provided through the town? Um, uh, or, yeah, or, or is it something that the town pays for all the time and, and we just provide the service? It's, it's a combination of both, depending upon the circumstances of how it's been initiated. Uh, regular inspections are something that the town would uh, be covering. If there is an inspection requested by a business or a new business or, or permits taken out that requires that business to get an inspection done, then they pay a fee for it. Okay, okay that, that, that satisfies it. So I was just wondering if there would be a, um, a fee attached to the inspections and, and, and maybe different ones would, have, would maybe have a fee or not have a fee. I'm, I'm not super familiar with how that works, but um, thank you. I am also in support. Councillor Taylor. 
uh, yeah, through the mayor. I'm also uh, in support of this as well. Um, I remember my follow-up uh, to Mr. Wagstaff. Uh, in this, when we look at um, evaluating or, or going over buildings, these include our buildings as well. Like, and I go back to the conversation we had two nights ago uh, with regards to our facilities and ensuring that, you know, if we have issues with a third party, then it should be done internally. And that's great. Through the mayor to Councillor Taylor and, and all of council, that is that is correct. Uh, town facilities are also required to have these inspections completed. And further to that, to note, those are the ones that we would uh, target, so to speak, first. Uh, before going out to the community to ensure that as you know from a leading point of view that we would have our facilities at, at, at a standard before we head out to the community all right anything else on the deputy fire chief if not we're gonna move on uh, to arena supervisor also mr. Wagstaff Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just if may, I may have a moment to pull it up on my computer. This was my reason for sliding in at two minutes two. There's some cues in the printer not printing. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, through the mayor to all of council, uh, the arena supervisor is a is a working supervisor uh, position. Similar in nature to our existing aquatic supervisor, it provides the, the existing supervisor in the leisure center with the aquatics provides hands-on leadership and strategic direction in, for the direct reports and day-to-day -day operations. That would be the intent of this position with the arena uh, side of the operation at the leisure center. Uh, active supervision of team members is crucial for effective direction of arena staff, managing performance, delegating tasks, training and development, scheduling coverage. Uh, and that's the coverage when someone calls in sick or, um, or if they're off for training uh, in, in matters such as that. This position would be responsible for overseeing the daily maintenance related tasks in the arena areas of the building, as well as providing training, support and supervision to the arena staff. They would also assist with the user group management. Uh, when, when I say user group management, that's the existing uh, supervisor and recreation manager for the building. There are identified areas requiring greater attention that include coordination of maintenance related issues needing addressed immediately. When I say needing to addressed immediately, those are the things that come up in, in the daily process uh, of just operating the building. Minor maintenance comes up and that needs to be addressed immediately. And a supervisor will help coordinate that and ensure that the, the proper attention is taken to that. Uh, ability to provide training and reinforcement of safe work procedures, site and task specific health and safety coordination. Uh, that opportunity takes, uh, and the opportunity for professional development takes time. Uh, we have emphasized that for our staff across our organization and in this uh, particular work area, it is forever uh, a challenge to be able to pull them away to be able to get that training during the day without some coverage to backfill them. And that's where a, a, a supervisor lead hand would be able to uh, help coordinate that and provide that opportunity for the staff, as well as the coverage for absences and leaves. Uh, the time to provide uh, a level of oversight and support that is, is needed to ensure that all maintenance tasks are being completed properly and in a timely manner is a challenge for the recreation manager to balance with administrative and other responsibilities. My apologies, I lost my place there when I started to scroll down. Um, organizing workflow and ensuring that employees understand their duties or delegated tasks takes focus, it takes time, and at regular frequencies, and that's a critical function. Uh, right now, uh, the structure that we have in place uh, you know, is conflicting for the recreation manager to be uh, doing those daily hands-on uh, activities as well as balancing the, the the managerial administrative responsibilities because sometimes those are taking that manager out of the building actually on a frequent basis to deal with uh, user groups to deal with other business with regards to being a manager within our organization this is common um, 
uh, sorry, it's the Leisure Center regularly experiences maintenance-related issues that affect the overall functioning and safety of the arena and the building. This is common for recreation facilities, even in newer and well-maintained facilities. Um, by having a dedicated supervisor in place, we can ensure that all the maintenance tasks are completed uh, timely and to a high standard, while allowing the recreation manager the time to focus on other equally important aspects of our operations. Um, maintenance, therefore, would not be done off the side of the manager's desk, instead receiving the attention and expertise that it would require. Without this additional resource, there is potential risk that daily upkeep is not at a consistent standard. In order to address these challenges and ensure that our arena and the overall building of the leisure complex, sorry, leisure center is operating at its peak efficiency, it's essential to include an arena building supervisor position, as I would recommend that. The scope of the manager currently, currently the scope of the manager supervises 12 direct reports. Uh, that's full-time, eight full-time arena staff, an administrative support, uh, the aquatic supervisor, two guest uh, services staff that are part-time, and, uh, and on top of that as well, the pool staff as a whole are underneath the secondary scope of that manager. A lot of time is dedicated to managing the user groups from the recreation manager and everyday patrons who use the facility that have concerns or requests that want to see the manager. Um, Monitoring uh, employee productivity, uh, providing constructive feedback and coaching is a critical role for, for any managing of staff. Uh, improving the staffing model to have a recreation manager to supervise five direct reports provides better oversight and better planning. What would the impacts be uh, if this funding is not approved? Uh, the arena supervisor position uh, um, so I'm, you know, I mentioned earlier that the current supervisory model is challenged to provide that kind of quality and focus time, uh, as well as an appropriate contractor safety management and oversight to be able to do that in-depth oversight on a regular basis. Mentorship and workplace culture are, uh, are very important and um, you know, continually uh, this is an issue that may have an impact if... Uh, if we're continuing to have a, a split concentration for the, the recreation manager. There is a further risk of, of staff burnout and morale issues due to scheduling and, and, and coverage challenges exist uh, as we ask staff to uh, up our game uh, across the board with regards to training and, and being sharpening our saw, so to speak. Uh, so, Mr. Riggs, I'm going to just cut you off there because yeah. we do have a lot of items to go through. Uh, Councillor Positioning. Yeah, through the marriage, Mr. Rice. Is this an in scope or out of scope position? It is a out of scope position. It's an out of scope position. All right. Uh, any further questions, Councillor Taylor? Sorry, um, through the mayor, I didn't hear the the cost. Uh, sorry. Yeah, and uh, my apologies. The the, the mayor uh, through the mayor to all of council. He was right on cue because I was on my <laughs> on my final sentence. Uh, the overall budget impact for the position, including salary benefits, uh, professional develop, phone, IT, etc., uh, is one hundred and three thousand uh, dollars, being sixty five percent funded from taxes. As this position is a cost shared. Uh, uh, will be cost shared per the Yellowhead County cost sharing agreement. And then on an, uh, the first year again, by the time we would have it in position, it would be 54,295 in uh, 2024 with a base 103,000 thereafter. Thank you, Councilor Moore. Uh, through the mayor to Mr. Wagstaff. So I take it the arena supervisor would would be in charge of, of things in the arena, the ice arena and the uh, swimming pool area as well? So the primary area of focus would be the arenas, uh, those two uh, parts of the facility, and the overall uh, minor maintenance of, of, the, of the building. The pool itself would still have the aquatic supervisor. So the staff and the operations of the, of the pool and the systems that support the pool would be with that supervisor. It would then build you know, three individuals with a leadership team within the leisure center. Uh, CEO Beveridge. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to su supplement this item. Um, one of the things that, um, as council, you know, as we move closer to uh, the YCE becoming coming to fruition, that's a key area in which we've required our uh, recreation manager to be at every one of those meetings. Um, it, that's part of the discussion that we've had as, as far as the requirement to have an operational, someone that's actually in tune with the operations of the facility to be at the table for each and every one of those meetings. So um, our current manager, that's an additional, that's changed since, you know, um, where we, when we shifted scope um, in order to um, ensure that we have a really good understanding of what it's going to take to create a facility that is um, as operationally effective as possible. Thank you, Councillor Schnard. Uh, one of my questions, the town manager just answered. The next question is: Have we have cons have we talked with the county about this? If it affects them. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Schnard, uh, yes, this was a, a piece that had been opened up. Uh, many months ago uh, with a discussion with, with our counterparts of the county. Councillor Taylor. Uh, through the mayor, um, leaning towards certainly uh, supporting this, and I, I look at not just now but into the future, and I look at, uh, and this I can be worded as a question to Mr. Wagstaff, how instrumental would this individual be in terms of the transition, the construction time of the YCE? We're looking at how that play out, we're going to have construction everywhere, plus the development of a third arena, essentially it'll be the curling rink. They'll be, in, I assume, be in charge of that as well down the line. Uh, and how instrumental is balancing all that going to be? Through, to me, uh, through the mayor to Councillor Taylor and all of council, uh, the position would allow that capacity for the recreation manager to be focused on managing, as, as the CEO mentioned, the complex issues during the renovation. Uh, that's going to be heightened. Um, and provided the needing staffing capacity following the renovations, as you have, as you indicated, uh, we actually expand the, the arena side and to include a curling rink as well as two arenas. So it's both in the interim as we get through the next two to three years for the renovation as well as setting up um, a stronger uh, leadership and management at the facility after the renovations. Councillor Chachka. Thanks. Uh, through the chair to uh, council and administration, um, this isn't the, the comments that uh, Mr. Wagstaff mentioned about um, uh, staff burnout and the, you know, maybe an increased amount of maintenance that needs to be done in the facility. Um, so that, that's not the first time that we've heard those types of um, scenarios, especially in, in that building. Um, and as, as much as I know it's not um, always desirable to add more staff, um, I, I think this is an area that it, it's absolutely needed. Um, it, this is not the, yeah, like this isn't the first time we've heard this. Um, this has been going on for several years, I think. And, um, and as Councillor Taylor mentioned, as we move into a new facility, um, we, we, need it, we need all hands on deck. Um, and we definitely need a recreation manager um, available to give um, their full-time attention to that project as well. So I am in support. Thank you. Uh, I'm also in support of this. I think, Council, we did a tour of the facility when we were dealing with the hot tub issues, and we had a little walk around, and there are things that were not being um, dealt with, and it's because we always seem to be under-resourced and not have a focus as things happen on the sides of people's desks. And... Uh, it's an older facility, um, and the new facility, uh, when it comes online, we want to make sure it's maintained properly um, and that um, it's operating properly. So uh, I'm also in support of this um, uh, position. Council, do you have any other questions or comments? If not, we'll move on to improved HVAC filters. Is that you, Mr. Wagstaff, or is that Mr. Hanlon? Thank you, sir. Through you to all of council. This is coming from the uh, Town of Edson Maintenance and Facilities area. And uh, <coughs> what we realized uh, coming out of the fires in 2023 was that uh, there were opportunities to improve the air handling, uh, the filtration of the air, air handling equipment of all the Town of Edson uh, buildings and facilities. Uh, the uh, air filters are changed quarterly or seasonally and that's the recommendation for all the buildings. Uh, we, of course, have done that. This proposal is to bring and to improve the filtration with carbon filters and uh, has an annual cost increase of $15,000. 
uh, an option, of course, if we chose not to do this, we would obviously continue to change out air filters, but uh, would not see the additional cost or the possibility of the improved filtration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Council questions, Councillor Chachka. Thanks, so through the chair to Mr. Hanlon. Um, thanks for bringing this forward. Um, I, I have to say the town did a fabulous job at maintaining all their buildings and keeping them open, um, even while we had the smoke events last year. Um, my question is regarding the carbon filters. Are they also going, will this also be included um, in buildings like the library as well? Mr. Hanlon. Councillor Chotka, Chotka, through you to all of council, I am uncertain if we maintain the library building once it reopens. I apologize. We will, uh, I, I, the, uh, the maintenance portfolio has recently come to me and I uh, am unsure if we maintain it. We do. Right we do. We do? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this then would be included, and so in discussions with maintenance, uh, they buy in bulk the filters for all of the buildings, and then of course we do this quarterly, so that would be included. All of the uh, facilities where we regularly change out air, filter, air filters would be included in that. Councillor Pasichny? Yeah, through the Mayor to uh, Mr. Hanlon. The are you talking just running carbon filters in the summer, like during forest fire season, or are you? Is this going to be a year-round project? The the re thank you, Councillor Pasichny, through you to all of council. The recommendation coming from uh, the uh, the facilities area is to do it four times a year, so consistently stay with the carbon uh, filter. Yeah, uh, yeah. Further follow up to that. Um, I guess my question, the reason I ask is. Um, in my day job, we, we have four HVACs. Um, we, we just purchase carbons. They're actually cheaper right now than they are in the summer when it's forest season. Um, and we generally run them in the summer when there's heavy, heavy smoke and heavy particulate in the air. Um, do you feel there's a huge benefit to ha running them four times a year or not just in the summer? Um, maybe just, I'm just kind of curious on the merit of that. Councillor Pasichny, through you to all of council, this is certainly something that we could investigate. Uh, we are in the process of recruiting a new uh, facilities and energy manager, and that would be one of the service reviews I would expect of that individual, is to see if there are uh, opportunities and efficiencies that we should be looking at in this. Thank you. Any other questions, comments on the HVAC filters? Seeing none, we'll move on to life safety materials. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That will be me as well. This is coming forward from the uh, maintenance and facilities and safeties area. Life, life safety equipment includes emergency lighting in uh, town of Edson buildings, fire extinguishers and recertifications of fire extinguishers, replacement of damaged or missing fire extinguishers, AED, AED maintenance and life cycle replacement of first aid kits. Uh, those would be first aid kits in buildings as well as first aid kits in all facility or in all uh, all vehicles and equipment excuse me um, this is to ensure compliance with the Alberta occupational health and safety code Alberta fire code and Alberta Alberta building code um, of note AED batteries and pads expire every two to five years uh, the town owns several AED units and they'll require placement parts on a three-year life cycle commencing in 2027. This then is bringing forward uh, the proposed uh, additional monies uh, in 2024, a request of $9,500. This is to address some deficiencies that have been noted, particularly in, uh, in emergency lighting in some buildings. The typical uh, annual every year is then 5,500 in 2025. 5,500 in 2026, and then 7,500 in 2027. That additional $2,000 is the three-year cycle I mentioned where we would have AED repairs and updates that would be required. Um, I guess respectfully, if we were not to do this, we would still do it, of course, but it would be, uh, these monies would be expended through just general facilities and maintenance uh, budget codes and our desire is to try and track this and make sure it's done correctly going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chachka. Um, through the chair to Mr. Hanlon, um, scared to ask this, um, have, have we not been doing this before? The, the regular maintenance of our fire extinguishers? Councillor Chachka, through you to all of council, we have. 
Okay. Um, and the, uh, the, the payment of that has simply just been in, in general maintenance, and we feel we're better to be able to track and identify that this has indeed, in, indeed been done in past years by creating a, a separate code for it. Okay, thank you. I was scared to ask that question, to be honest. I didn't. Um, thanks for that. I, I, I'm one of the guys around this table that probably will need an AED at some point, so. <laughs> Uh, communication support staff. Oh, that's Mr. Hamlin as well. It is, sir. Thank you very much. Through you to all of council. This request uh, aligns with council's strategic plan priorities that support strong communication both with internal, that is internal staff and external public stakeholders. Uh, the contention is reinforced in the findings of the 2023 communication audit, which uh, council recently received. Of course, the importance of clear and concise communication in achieving Council's vision is important and the primary motivator for this budget proposal. Um, currently, the area only has a single full-time staff member, leaves little time to communicate Council's messages clearly and as strongly as we uh, would wish. Uh, a second supporting communications position would open up more time for strategic alignment of messaging, a significant reduction in the reliance on external contracted services, improvements to internal communications, and uh, allow for communications backup relief in uh, future emergency situations. We've identified this as a potential six month recruitment uh, starting at July 1st of this year, just with the timing of the budget process. And of course, the time to uh, potentially recruit a, an individual. Uh, the position would require a laptop, office setup, uh, phone, iPad, etc. There's some costs there. There are one time costs and then a salary cost annually of 79,400, that's the annual cost. Uh, we would look to uh, all in with a six month for 2024, if approved by council, of just over $65,000. And uh, if we were not to do this, the impact would be, uh, just uh, to uh, remind council, $20,000 in budgeted con in co contracted services was budgeted in the interim budget this year and uh, the depart the department would be seeking to increase that to $36,000 to cover our external contractor and keep them on retainer through the balance of the year if the uh, second position was not uh, approved uh, sir happy to answer any questions on this matter councilor taylor yeah, through the mayor to, to council administration, I'm, I'm very supportive of this. Uh, we keep preaching about communication, getting the message out there. And, you know, we have a staff here of over 100 people, and we have one person dedicated to communicating all of the messaging through all of the departments and the messages of council. It is a lot. And, and the amount of messages that I, I just see going through the page is constant, and it's just one person doing that. So... Um, very supportive. I think we need it, um, especially as a, you know, as a municipality continues to grow and and uh, has more questions and is, wants more instant answers. Right. That's the thing is that we're we're not accustomed to to waiting long periods of time for answers anymore. Uh, only question is it, once we hire and if we if council does approve this and once we hire uh, uh, the the second position. Uh, how long would that third party, the contractor position, contractor that we have, do we have to give them notice? Do we keep them? Do we have? Are we a contractually obligated to keep them throughout the year, uh, or or can we cease it right away? Councillor Taylor, through you to all of council, we're on a month-to-month -month retainer, and so we can negotiate, and uh, we would anticipate keeping them for certain things, but not nearly as much as we've utilized them in the past. Councillor Moore. Uh, through the mayor to Mr. Hanlon, uh, give us an example what uh, what this additional person would do as far as communications and, and such. Thank you, Councillor Moore, and through you to all of council. Um, so one of the things we would see bringing in with this individual would be some assistance with graphic design, the preparation of uh, reports, memos, and materials to engage with the community and communicate with the community. Uh, it would provide uh, a significant opportunity for relief and respite 
of our communications uh, of Steve, sorry, hi Steve, um, and uh, would allow him a, uh, an opportunity to uh, take a vacation, uh, possibly be ill, and uh, would have somebody here that would be prepared and able to pick up and uh, kind of carry the load in, uh, in our uh, communications in the absence of that individual. Councillor Prasichny. Yeah, through the mayor, Mr. Hanlon. Um, I, I do see the need for, for additional support staff in, in this area, but my question is on the, the external contractor, and you, you may have touched on it slightly, but will this, if, if we were to hire a, and approve this position, um, what would you anticipate our, our contract fees then being? Will they be eliminated entirely? Will we have, okay, well, we're only going to spend 10000 because that would have to be consideration into, into the cost yeah. of this position. Thank you, Councillor Pesigny, and through you to all of Council. Um, certainly, we would not be seeking to increase the current $20,000 budget, and uh, I would imagine we would not be expending much of that this year, but I would suggest that given the time delay, if this were approved, the recruitment, the attraction, the onboarding of that individual, there would still be some supports necessary, but uh, long-term, the anticipation would be a reduction in... Uh, in the contracted services to the communications area. Yeah, so maybe further that. So I, I'm not really referring to this year because we're still be having the person um, to do it. But so uh, say we're successful in hiring a successful candidate within this calendar year and then moving into the next year, are we still going to require additional budget? Because right, it's one thing to add a, another position at the, the, at the dollars you, you told us, but then we're adding another position. We're still going to have the contract fees and we're still going to be contracting things out. Then we might as well stay at the contractor model. So I'm kind of just like, because right now you're saying it's 20000 This year it might be $36,000. Um, so then would we reduce our contractor fee to $5,000? Uh, because that number, I think, has to be included in our cost of the support position. So. Oh, go ahead, uh, Seal Beaver. Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Precision, I was uh, wanting to speak to this a little bit. Um, our projected uh, for future is that it's only on project base. So planning when we have projects uh, that Council approves throughout the year, if we have some major, if we uh, on that uh, required basis, it's for me, um, when we spoke about this future, um, there wouldn't be contracted services unless it was tied to projects in which we're planning for in our corporate plan. Okay, thank you. Councillor Trashka. Uh, thanks uh, through the chair to uh, administration and council. Um, I, I am in support of this. This was something that was brought to council's attention last term, probably at the beginning of the term, so six years ago, that that eventually that this would be needed. Um, and and I think for the points that uh, Councillor Taylor mentioned as well, and and Mr. Hanlon, um, that that it is needed. And when we look at um, the health and well-being of our staff as well. Um, uh, I, th I think this is essential. Um, if we want to maintain our current staff, um, uh, then, then we need to offer them the right supports, um, as well as the way we communicate changes completely um, than, than it used to be. So um, I am in support of this. And, and thank you, Councillor Positioning, for bringing up the costing with the contract. I, I think that's valuable information as well. Seal Beverage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we speak a lot about, about external uh, communications. But as uh, Councillor Taylor mentioned, we have 100 staff to communicate with as well. It's becoming increasingly difficult to communicate effectively with uh, the amount of staff that we have. And that's part of this decision, uh, of this recommendation as well, is that to allow for some uh, strategic, uh, you know, uh, planning towards how to communicate effectively and um, to ensure that um, all of our staff are receiving the same information um, because at this point in time we're simply using email which is not actually a very effective uh, means for communication not all of our staff have access so um, you know it's a matter of with regards to our safety program etc um, there's just things that internally that I think that we can um, from my perspective, I'd like to communicate better with our staff as well. And I think from the uh, senior management um, level as well, that's been a consistent challenge that we've had throughout the organization. Thank you. Um, I'm also in support of this. We first added the communications position, I think, 10, 12 years ago. Um, and since that time, a lot has changed in terms of um, how people get their information. Uh, media has been decimated on all levels, unfortunately. Um, so getting that message out is harder. And people, as was mentioned earlier, want answers now. 
it's amazing that you don't respond to somebody on instant message in an hour and you, they think you're ignoring them. Um, so, and, and knowing how hard um, our current communication staff member works in order to try to respond to people, um, I think it's it would be unfair of us to not uh, support some support staff here. Um, we've seen that during the wildfires uh, where we had no additional coverage. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, this is long overdue. Our communications audit, which we just reviewed, um, certainly spoke to this and some areas in which we need to improve on. And um, so, yes, once again, I am in support. Uh, moving on to housing strategy, and this is Mr. Hamlin. Thank you, sir. Um, my final proposal for a little while I'm with council <coughs> is the uh, coming from the planning area. It's a one-time project. Um, and that is the uh, to seek a funding for a housing strategy. Uh, so that this would allow us to better understand the current state of housing in Edson and develop a strategy with objectives to improve housing diversity, supply, and potentially affordability of housing. Um, such a strategy comes in two parts. First, a housing needs assessment report. Uh, this understands the, the current housing uh, situation, uh, which then informs or leads to the second part, which is a housing strategy. Uh, this allows the uh, access to a range of options for affordable housing, diversity of housing types, uh, that is uh, suitable for current and future residents, and uh, as is increasingly be becoming uh, obvious uh, economic development and business retraction and retraction, attraction and retention, excuse me. Um, a housing strategy with short, medium and long-term objectives uh, is the deliverable of this initiative. <coughs> and if this were not approved, well, if it's not approved, uh, we wouldn't gain the understanding and the recommendations of such a strategy. Uh, the town would be less likely to be successful in anticipated and future housing grants opportunities without this analysis and data which could be generated and available and at the ready in uh, any potential future grant applications. Uh, with that, it is, uh, it is proposed for 2024 at a estimated cost of uh, $100,000 from taxes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon, and I'm going to speak to this one uh, first this time. Uh, I am in support of this. Uh, there is uh, literally hundreds of millions of dollars of grant money on the table from federal and provincial governments for housing. Uh, we have no strategy. Uh, we have the ability to completely miss the boat. Uh, we're already behind other communities when uh, looking at applying for this. We know that housing has been a challenge uh, in our community um, over the last few years. Um, I think some of that pressure is alleviating now with some projects that are complete, um, but I think this is uh, very well, well worth investment in order to leverage those grant dollars moving forward from the provincial and federal governments. Housing um, is a major focus right now uh, across this country, and as we talk about that business retention and trying to find the, the labour, we need to have the housing to support that. So um, that's my position on that. Councillor Taylor. Uh, to the mayor, to council administration, I'm supportive of this as well. <clears throat> uh, I sit on the homelessness task force, and of course, we are looking at sort of where this task force is going to go. And, and of course, the word that they're going to use are transitional housing, not affordable housing, is transitional housing. But then, uh, you know, there has to be those multi steps to the process of that, and it's transitional housing, and eventually gets to affordable housing. There's a process and step, and this municipality can play that role in that. And of course, the second thing, the second thing that, you know, is something that is kind of the, that white elephant that we see in our community, and I see it when I take my son out for driving lessons, is Hallandale Phase 2. And, you know, as we're driving in circles, you know, around the four houses out there, you know, my son asks, what are we doing in this area? I said, I don't know, turn left here. Uh, and I think we need to... <laughs> this strategy can help with that because like we have say a gold mine of lots that we need to sell out there or figure out something we're going to do with and this strategy can be part of that and I think uh, much of our community is looking at us to to do something about it so um, that can be part of the plan too so I'm supportive. Councillor Chouinard. Uh, yes uh, through the chair so if I'm understanding it right this housing strategy if we pay the hundred thousand dollars and we get grants because in Edson we're not short of housing we're short of affordable housing and like even where we have empty lots the only time they fill if people are moving for economics so 
If this will bring us money to help curb the affordable housing, I'm in favor of it. But if it's just another plan to tell us, hey, guess what? We can do this. We're doing nothing. I'm not in favor of it. Councilor Persichny. <clears throat> yeah, through the mayor, maybe to the mayor. I'm not sure what grants. Um, maybe someone needs to explain to me because, like, I, I, I'm always challenged on spending $100,000 on a document um, and then we set it on the shelf and then somebody can come and grab it and take it. Um, if there's an end result or, or again, a, and maybe this is related to like the teeny homes they got in Hinton, if that's a, an area. But I, I just want to know where we're going to go because um, I, we went through this in the early 2000s with, with in our Grand Economic, the Grand Albert Economic Region spent tens and tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars on studies. And I'm sure that you just got to go find those books. They're on a wall somewhere. And so I'm always challenged by strategies. And it's, uh, and, and it, I think the strategies are coming from, from all the different levels of bureaucracy in this, in this country. It's like, well, you can't get a grant unless you've done a $200,000 study. And it's like, it kind of drives me mental. And um, our housing vacancies are way up in our community because a lot of major projects have ended. Um, so I just want to need to know the end result where, okay, we do this $100,000 study and then we're going to get the, the chances of getting a $5 million grant or a $1 million grant or a $10 million grant or, oh, now we can get this affordable housing money um, and then it can open up another project. So I need to know that end result because paying $100,000 to have a document sit on the wall is, is challenging to me. And, um, and that's, you know, we're, like, I'm just doing the math here right now. We've already got uh, 300, almost $400,000 in asks on here. Um, that's 4% tax increase. So, um, so uh, with that, uh, so the federal government has announced uh, the rapid housing strategy and the rapid housing grants. Um, and you're absolutely right. Spending $100,000 for a strategy sit on a shelf is completely useless. And that's up to this municipality to actually put it to use. Um, but if you think you can apply for a grant without having a strategy in place, good luck. Um, and I think that uh, one of the challenges is is that we don't have a clear understanding of what the needs are in the community in terms of housing mix. Um, and, you know, there's lots of houses out there. Um, if, you, if you go to realtor.ca, half of them look like they need to be torn down because there has been no investment to, into them. And then on the other side, you have very expensive homes. Um, so understanding what the needs of the community are, I think, are, is critically important um, to understand uh, where we are missing um, in terms of supply and um, just like and I'm going back to things like the museum or things like um, the YCE center we only got those grants because we actually had a plan in place and we were able to apply for those grants uh, without that then then we're basically missing out on that opportunity um, if housing is something that is important to this council and the philosophy of this council um, then I think that we have to invest in that strategy. Um, if not, $100,000 to a consultant, I hate it as well. Uh, but that means we're just not going to have the opportunity to apply for those uh, grants. I don't know, CEO Beveridge, or if anybody in administration wants to speak to this uh, from your points of view. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Kitlitz. Um, I, I guess, Mr. Mayor, a couple, a couple things. And again, I, I agree. I think a lot of the, the stuff that I've looked at in my past, it, it's based on um, any of the grants I've looked at, it, it's looking for data and, and the strategy. The, the needs analysis is also an important piece of that because we can sit here and we can say that there's, there's more houses available now, there isn't, there was yesterday, there isn't today. But I really don't know what the situation is in Edson. I really can't say. And without this study, you know, this report and this stuff work being done, it really tells you that where the gaps are and, and some strategies and things you can do to, 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 to help. Um, it could lead to changes in our land use bylaw. I know we're doing a new land use bylaw right now, but the study could also recommend other way, other things that, in that bylaw you could do to, to help with housing. So, so it is a bit of a crux that a lot of these grants um, are, are are contingent on having that strategy. Um, but in truth, the data that you can get from it is pretty good, um, and it really tells you where your gaps are and, and where you need to focus your efforts. Because right now, I I'm not sure any of us can really definitively say where where we need to do that. So. That's, what, that's just my, my question. Councillor Taylor? Yeah, through the mayor, uh, you know, and I'm glad you brought up that it fits in our strat plan because um, we put this in there two and a half years ago that we address it, and, and thus far we've kind of haven't really been. I think this is the big step to doing it. And, and I can understand why bigger governments say, well, we won't give you grant money until you have a plan. That makes sense, right? Or else, you know, where are you going to spend your money? They want to see 
you know, you have some direction at least, right? And to, to Councillor Spazicci's point as well, and I, I do have to say this, um, and this is in the, uh, 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 the original document, as it were, the request RFD, um, that if we do approve all these requests, it, it's a 1.77% tax increase. So it's like due to all the, the readjustments we're making within the budget. So, um, you know, I just want to bring that up just in case we're looking at, it's not three or 4%. If we approve them all, it's 1.77%. Oh, Councilor Trachka? Uh, yeah, uh, through the chair to uh, Council and Administration. Um, so I, I admit, um, so I do sit on the Homelessness Task Force as well, and, and, but I, but I, and, and I understand that we've done a housing strategy there with the Rural Development Network, um, and we're kind of, kind of. Um, so we, we have identified gaps. Um, uh, and that one is a little bit more complicated because it also uh, requires an operational component um, to, serve, to serve the population that would be housed. Um, how is there um, and and I but 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 I do follow <coughs> Councillor Prasetchny's perspective on this um, it's and and maybe for different reasons um, uh, I, I am on the fence a little bit um, but I I do want to see a better housing situation in our community and and the part that I'm a little bit conflicted with is um, that you know I, I don't know if I want the town to develop like a new subdivision or something like that, right? Um, uh, you know, I want uh, buildings to be, built, to be built by developers. And I'm just wondering how strategies, if um, any administration has seen, how these strategies work um, when you get that end result. So if you've identified a certain gap, is it up to the municipality to get that federal grant? Or can we work with developers to, um, to kind of like pursue um, what is being recommended, um, and and would a housing strategy um, would that be con uh, consulting with our current um, developers in in the community? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Hamlin. Thank you, sir. Uh, to Councillor Chacha, to uh, all of council. Um, and I don't mean to be too obtuse, but in my experience, all of those have occurred. Uh, so you, you get the results of a, a study such as this, and the municipality may take a lead role on identified opportunities and identified grants and uh, may seek to try and move something like that forward. I would suggest that's very similar to what the town of Hinton did with the Rapid Housing Initiative a couple of years ago. Um, similarly, Grant opportunities exist where partnerships are, are, are of tremendous value, where you bring a private partner in and you're supported by the findings of a study such as this that align better potentially with certain grant opportunities. And then of course, lastly, developers that are interested in developing in our community will be more tempted if they see the option to, uh, to stack some uh, grants into a project that they were already planning on building or constructing. So I, I think that there is a number of ways in which grants could benefit and, and address some of the housing affordability issues here in uh, Edson. Thank you, Councillor Positioning. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to through Council. I, I still struggle a bit with it. Um, we keep going down paths and, and communities and municipalities alike are doing this all the time. It's. Um, it's a different government's responsibility for things and then municipalities decide it's not happening so they take it on and, and this is just kind of another one of those things and you know having a shovel ready project like a, the, the, the YCE center that makes sense we provide recreation for our community it's 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 our mandate it's it's what we do as municipalities um, housing it, it, there's there's housing bodies out there um, why aren't the housing bodies doing the studies um, you know, the province of Alberta, is, uh, they do, uh, through their agencies, they do studies. They know what the average rent is in the community. They know what the, what's going on. And um, I'm very fearful of spending $100,000, and in the end, we get nothing for it. Um, and and I, I came up with 4% because in, historically, every $100,000 of spending, there's a 1% in taxes. And you can, we can hide that all you want by pulling money out of the reserves. But... Um, to generate, a, 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 what is their number now? Maybe I'll ask Mr. Han that question. So, sorry? I think it's $125,000. Is it $125,000? Is it equals the 1% increase? Because there is, there is a value to that, and it's not the 1.7%, and um, they can play the numbers game, but um, to spend half a million dollars, it used to be a 5% tax increase if you didn't touch anything. So, um, you know, I, and, and 
I, I guess I don't, I don't hide anything on this stuff, on the housing stuff, is that to me it's, uh, you know, we have to worry about protecting our community, we have to worry about the infrastructure in our community, we need to worry about our roads, our sewers, our waters, and our rec facilities, and now we're going to start diving into housing, and I guess I struggle with that. Um, so, and I'm, I, I have the right to be wrong or, or voted down, but uh, I, I think I've made my point. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Pasichny. I remember a councillor always saying that. You have every, every right to be wrong. Uh, councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to, well, I'll, I'll start off with, with Councillor Chashka. Um, the, the rural development study, just so I understand, that that was not necessarily a housing study. It was more on the, on the homelessness on, on acquiring houses. So it was a very different study. And then the, the overall thing here, I mean, you know, we have to know what the needs are in our community. We, we do. Like, uh, what is the greatest need and how can we whether assist and not I, I agree I don't I don't want to get into the the housing business either I, I think that, you know that's perhaps one of the mistakes that you know long ago with Hillendale is that the town was in the development business of, of selling a whole bunch of lots and and uh, and now we're stuck with them I'd rather see a development do that but I think a developer would be much happier if they had some sort of plan and some sort of work already done from them then they come in and they can do that work um, I think there's way more options to have. And Mayor Zahara said it earlier, there's access to grants that we can get into, right? Um, but we won't know what we can do until we have that study. And um, what I've learned that this far on council is that we can do much more when we have that study in front of us. And, and we look at the, the stormwater study that we did. Once we had that study complete, we knew the direction of where we can go, right? And I think believe this is the same the same thing. We will have some direction of where to go instead of just looking at empty houses and empty lots, which does us no good because that means people aren't living here. We need those places filled up. We need the, those places uh, to collect that tax money to provide the recreational programs that, that, we, that we provide. So um, those are my comments. Uh, thank you, Councillor Taylor. And just I mentioned the rapid housing site. So I just pulled it up here. It's a $1.5 billion housing program. Uh, Councillor Schrenard. Okay, yeah. Um, through the chair, just to comment to everyone. I mean, I'm hearing all the comments. I have to totally agree with uh, the comment, right to be wrong. On the housing strategy, we are not in that kind of business. Uh, the 100,000, I believe, would be well spent lobbying higher governments, being the federal and provincial government, to let them do this because they are human beings. But I don't believe in town of Edson, we should get in the housing business. We need to get into the running needs, so I won't support 100000 for strategy. Thank you, Councillor Shadarn. With all due respect, um, the federal government has been lobbying. That's why they're providing the funds to municipalities to figure out what's going on in their communities so we could develop the housing. So uh, there's nothing to lobby at this point. We have the funds available. Now it's up to us if we want to proceed with that or not. Uh, Councillor Chachka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the chair to council and administration. Um, so I, I, I do agree with the councillors that have mentioned to not be in the housing business. Um, but I, I, I do want to approach this with an open mind um, and have an understanding that we do have a subdivision that is empty. Um, we also um, failed to approve another subdivision that came to council a few years ago because we don't have um, you know, proper water infrastructure um, to support that. Um, so I, I am looking at the outcomes and I don't know if, I, if that's the right thing to do is to just look at, oh, we can't do that or we can't do that. Um, and I, I, I don't want to be building new subdivisions and um, uh, spending, I guess, taxpayer money down the road to, to do that. Um, but, uh, but I do realize that there are capital grants out there for the homelessness part, right? But unfortunately, that has an operational thing that they is a little bit trickier um, with that component. Um, but I, I think that if there is an opportunity to help the residents in our community that are um, not in a position to um, you know, pay those high rents and, and build a brand new house, because quite frankly, if you are a young person, you're not gonna get a mortgage to build a new house. Um, and some of the lots we have right now don't allow that. So um, as Mr. Kitlitz mentioned, maybe, maybe that will, Maybe this will help us identify as a council where we need to make some changes within our land use bylaw if that is something that comes about. Um, and then we can make those decisions and then maybe a developer can do that. Um, but I, I think until we have that data, um, 
I, I know for me, I'm getting hung up on all these ifs, and I think just seeing the data would be really helpful for that clarity. Um, and if there is one point, how many billions? Uh, 1.5 billion in the last round. 1.5 billion dollars. Um, you know, that, why, why would I want to give that to every other community but Edson? So I guess that's, I'm, I'm in support. Uh, thank you, Councillor Chachka. And just to wrap up the conversation, I, th I really enjoyed this conversation because I think it's, it's and, and to Councillor Pesetchny's uh, uh, point, I, I totally agree. We don't need to be in the housing business. Uh, there's so many areas. We don't need to be doing medical first response. That's not a responsibility of municipality, but we do it anyway. Um, there's municipalities that are stepping in all kinds of areas because uh, other levels of government uh, aren't uh, doing the responsibilities. And when we have the conversations with ministers or MLAs or whoever we're talking to, they're saying, well, what's your plan? Well, I ha we have no plan. Well, then why are you asking me for money if you have no plan? Um, so it's that catch-22. Um, and for me, this is not an ongoing operational cost. This is a one-time project. Uh, to get that information. Uh, is it going to be successful for us? I can't commit to that. Um, but I, I can tell you that it really frustrates me when I see other communities getting grants for housing. And, and I look at my community and we have no development happening in terms of housing. And some of that has to do with lack of uh, uh, developers um, that I would certainly like to see if we could leverage uh, something to to make something happen for, for the town of Edson. But um, I think we've batted this one around enough. Um, so we will move on to something that I think will actually reduce uh, costs. Uh, FCM Council attendance, CO Beverage. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a council request um, on, on that I'm introducing and I'll hand it over to council for discussion. Um, as per uh, policy um, LM-4, council attendance at F, Federal of Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference and Alberta Municipalities Conference. Um, this policy essentially establishes the attendance um, of council members to both of those um, conferences. And what the what the information within the policy states is that members of council are all auth all authorized to attend these the, both events so long as that it is within the annual budget. Um, so this was brought forward as a council request. Um, I, the council does have the information with regards to the, the annual costs. I'll, I'll go over a very high level and I'll allow the conversation to continue. So of course, um, and this is specific to the federal uh, FCM, I'll just say it quickly. Um, essentially, um, that cost potentially arranges um, for each location because they are across the country. Um, you know, when it's, when it's local, of course, the costs are less, but not, not exceptionally less. So it ranges from about 23,000 to 29,000, um, per, if all members of council were to, um, attend. One of the things I do want to note is that it's very uncommon, actually, that all members of council to attend. Um, so, uh, for this, for this conversation, this isn't really an administration request, so I'll leave it to council to discuss um, with regards to whether or not a reduction is requested. Uh, yeah, and so I'll hand this over to Councillor Chachka because I think this was her request here. Uh, but I just I want to give a little history on this. So uh, historically, uh, the mayor and two councillors were authorized to go. We did make a change to policy. Uh, a few years ago because uh, some years nobody wanted to go and then all of a sudden everybody wanted had the ability or wanted to go uh, in particular to a conference in which we were advocating for pipelines in which five councillors and including the mayor wanted to go in order to do that um, and the previous policy wouldn't allow for that so uh, with that I'll hand it over to Councillor Chachka and if I hit the button right there we go uh, thank you, um, uh, through the chair to council and administration. So I, I did bring this forward. Um, I wanted to bring it up for discussion at our uh, strategic planning session um, and also to get the information. Um, so I, I wasn't aware of, of what it costs per councillor to go to these cities, um, maybe a ballpark, and I, I know we have that information online and I could look it up, but it's kind of divided up a little bit differently that it's maybe not as, as clear as, um, as it would to show the event itself. Um, and we did uh, have some discussion at our uh, strategic planning session about it, and um, and Mayor Zahara is right. Um, it wasn't budgeted prior, and, and then we added it um, because we do have um, uh, years that there are more or less attendees at these events. Um, and, and I'll be... Uh, 
um, I'll be honest, I, it, it costs a little bit less than what I thought it did uh, to attend these events. Um, and, and in the scope of the entire budget, it is, it is not um, super significant. Um, I am understanding, and I know some of the other councillors mentioned that, um, you know, when there is something that we want to advocate for, like pipelines, um, that we all have that opportunity to um, learn about that, um, to respond and lobby as well. Um, and uh, at, at this point, I think I'm okay keeping it in the budget, but I'm, I'm really glad that it was something we could have brought forward by administration and have a discussion as a council about um, does this provide value? Because in the end, that is really important as well. Um, does it provide value? And are we doing a good job at um, showing that value too when we talk? I know some councillors um, will mention that, oh, when I was at FCM, you know, this is something I learned. And I really appreciate that as, uh, as a councillor to hear that. Um, so I know what those learnings were. And, um, uh, and then when they're able to share that with other members of councillor and the public, um, I, think, I think it shows that there is value there. And I certainly appreciate when councillors do that. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to council, um, I, I, st I still struggle a little bit about the value of all seven going. Um, and, you know, cost is one thing, but what we're getting out of it. And, and really what should be happening is the shared learning is, right? Going and really at the end of the day, you say all seven are advocating, but if all seven of us go, the general rule is the mayor speaks and the other six are supportive. That, that's really what we've done in the past. And what we should do is the mayor speaks on behalf of the municipality. That's, that's the way it goes. Um, uh, I, I, this is not the hill I'm going to die on with this. I also think it get, might get a little, I want to say tricky uh, this year because we do have, uh, uh, to when we pass this budget, which will be probably the what we're ga gauging is probably the first week in May, which is after the deadline to withdraw from FCM and some of our counselors have already signed up for it. So we would end up losing money. So we're kind of late in the game in terms of trying to evaluate it for the 2024 year anyways. Um, so this is not the hill I'm dying on. I still do question about the, uh, what we get from it. And uh, uh, you know, so, but uh, we'll, if we have lots of people going this year, I hope to see uh, them learn. So unfortunately I can't make it, but uh, hopefully they bring something back that, I can take away and I can learn. Uh, thank you, Councillor Taylor. And I, and I think I just want to clarify something. Um, while I am the official spokesperson for Council, when we go to these events, everybody's out there advocating because they're connecting with different politicians and different people. Um, and in this particular case, when we talk about pipelines, it was to show a show of force with Alberta saying to the rest of Canada, this is important to you, your country, and this is why. Um, Councillor Positioning. Yeah, through the uh, through the Merit Council, <clears throat> I've probably been to more FCMs than anybody at this table. Um, you, people always question. You can question if we're going to question FCM, then we question Alberta Muni's, and then we can question CAMA. We can question every single our recreation board going to their conferences, the recycling board conferences, and this conference and that conference. And um, at the end of the day, FCM is the same as Alberta Muni's. FCM is your your federal lobbying group. Um, what have we gotten out of it? Well, I don't know what it's called now, but at the time it was the, the federal gas tax money. And it was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to this municipality. Um, and we could, we could ask them the, to find out how much money we've gotten in that grant, because that there alone came from Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Millions, yeah, a lot of money. What we also forget is um, when you go to FCM, Alberta has the strongest contingent at FCM, and why? Well, we're a blue province. And right now, living through the red hell in, uh, and I'm a conservative, so I'm not going to hide that, um, the red hell of, of, uh, of our current regime. And Alberta doesn't get a strong voice federally without FCM. And, and I've been in the room on the debates on guns. And you have the, you know, the people from Montreal standing up, well, guns kill everybody. Well, and then you get Alberta and say, I need my guns for my farm. I need, I hunt. And, and the numbers, when you go there to vote on these resolutions, it's the people in the room with their voting power that allows these resolutions to pass. And I can assure you, uh, because of the strong contingent, there's some crazy resolutions that would hurt Alberta um, have, been, have been defeated because of the strong contingent of Albertans going to it. So it's more than just uh, people going to it. Um, the, the, the networking is there. Um, that's all fine and dandy. And then there's education sessions. But the biggest thing is it's our lobbying group to the federal government. We have no voice 
Um, right now, you can go talk to our MP. They just lost another vote yesterday, right? It, it, at the end of the day, we have no voice in Ottawa when we have, because um, the, the East controls so much of the vote. So it's our lobbying group. So we do get the money out of it. Um, and if you go back to the history on this, um, when we went to honorariums in this municipality, it was based on everybody attending. When we went to, um, to everybody going, it became, what happened was is at the time there was a three-year term, then we went to four-year terms. It was, okay, if you reduce the numbers, who goes? At one time it was the mayor and two, and then, okay, well, there's, there's six people on council who gets to go. Right now, we haven't, they, the only people have been going has been, been um, Ed, Gene, and I. And we even carpool, right? So, like, we're taking the same vehicle um, to, when we go to places just to, you know, so we're not to, to try and save money. So we even share Ubers, right? Like, so they, we're doing everything we can to, to reduce our costs as, 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 as it. But, I mean, I don't have to go. Uh, you know, I can take those days and spend it with my family. So I, there is a value. And I wouldn't sit here and say, I mean, every council should have the opportunity, the equal opportunity to go. If council wants to go down the path of saving money on conferences, then we could go to those models that some municipalities have where you have a conference budget. You pick and choose which ones you go to. Once your budget's gone, you're spent. Like, and there's some municipalities that do that. So if you want to go to the recycling conference, you, can, you spend your money there. If you want to go to Alberta Munis, you spend your money there. And, and then that would be a, a simple budget. Um, the biggest reason that the, the, the council went from sending a few to sending all, because um, at one time they were sending staff, which again, other than the CAO, staff don't really need to go to FCM. Um, it is about uh, sending a contingent there to represent Alberta and, and allows you to have a voice. We are at FCM, the same as some of villages that are Alberta unions. We are the small ones in the room, but still I think there is a value in it. Um, and I, I don't want to sit here and draw the names out of the hat to see who can go. Right now we have councillors like yourself, Councillor Taylor and Councillor Chackie, you guys haven't gone because you have life in the way and, and we get that. So at the end of the day, it's those who can go, go. But um, I would hate to see us to, to change it to try and save a, a small, very small budget item. Councillor Schnard. Through the chair, but I think Councillor Persistent University said everything, but I'd be the person that would be the second most to FCM. And same thing, it's the value, the lobbying. Um, I look at it, um, If I never want it to change. Give everyone a free opportunity. I looked at part of our honorarium. We are all paid to go. So I don't chastise people for wanting to go that don't go. So the same token, I hear the sport on the other side of the room. You appreciate the fact of us going. And, and like the mayor's comment, it's not just mayor and lobbying. We all lobby, and I agree with the other comment. Alberta sends the biggest amount there, and we are the loudest, and it's a chance for us to see other parts of uh, small town Nova, uh, Nova Scotia, similar problems, so it has great <coughs> value. So I'm in highly sport of it. Um, hopefully we can drop the issue and carry on. Thanks. All right, uh, is there any further comments? Um, I think I've gone to three in the last six years, going to Calgary. Uh, which is which will be great um, and you know we can change the funding for this because uh, no not all seven have ever gone there's always been a few that have been missing um, so um, we could change it but it's not going to change the budget significantly enough that anybody's actually going to notice and I would have I would also say um, that this council is pretty frugal on what uh, conferences we go to I don't think we've ever ever spent uh, our budgets uh, because we carpool we do all kinds of things in order to save costs so uh, with that uh, I think we are done with operating budget requests and I will call a 10 minute recess thank you ladies and gentlemen for that uh, break um, just before we continue on, uh, because this isn't a regular council meeting, uh, I don't know if CEO Beverage, if you can answer this, do we need a motion to extend past three hours? Mr. Mayor, unfortunately, um, it is actually a regular council meeting because it's actually okay. determined as a yes. Okay, so. In our uh, oh, but well, we have a motion. For, well, I guess we'll have to get this wrapped up here in an hour and a half. What? I know, but we're only four pages into the 80-page agenda, so. Uh, <laughs> moving on, citizen budget engagement for 2024 budgets. Um, oh, he's still with us. You're not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'm still here. Mr. Mayor, I'm still here. Great discussion. Really did, interesting. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you watch a movie while we were 
debating. No, I was actually listening intently. It's a very good discussion. I thought it was great. All right, go ahead. I've actually been informed by CEO Beverage that uh, Leah is going to have a couple of slides to share. Excellent. Go ahead, Leah. Oh, yeah, we're on. Good evening, everybody. Um, so this next slide will go over the citizen budget engagement survey that was sent out from April 24th to May 14th of 2023. So the site saw 269 visitors and 118 people provided their feedback and responses. And overall to all of the questions, there was a clear collective desire to keep spending at the same or similar levels to the prior year. Okay, thank you. And are we continuing on with Dave now? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, okay. Can Council see uh, the slide on the screen now? I don't see it. All right, I'll reshare. Pardon me for a minute. All right, we can see it now. Excellent. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, we are uh, getting to the where the rubber hits the road tonight. We're going to actually uh, head to um, um, the the actual uh, departmental budgets, and we'll start with, off with the uh, CEO of Beverage uh, in Legislative and Executive Office. Go ahead, CEO Beverage. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to all of council. So this functionary essentially covers the council, honorarium, expenses, along with the legislative services functions, um, such as subdivision development appeal boards, um, boards of committees, FOIP. Um, and in this area, as you can see, there's there's not much change, uh, just the removal of the chamber upgrade. Um, so again, those you'll notice this a lot within our cost centers. If there's a one-time project, you'll see it uh, being removed. Um, essentially. So um, this item, uh, there's not much, like, as, I, as I mentioned, anything to speak of, status quo. All right, thank you. Oh, Councillor Chachka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the chair to um, administration. Um, so for the, the 18,000 that's being transferred to the reserve, um, in the reserve policy, it says that the legislative reserve is supposed to be closed after the council chamber projects were completed. Um, so I'm just, I'm confused about that. If, if we're gonna keep it open um, and use and put the SDAB money in there for, for if we need them. CEO Beverage. Sir, Mr. Mayor, can you repeat the question? Um, on the operating legislative reserve, um, the optimal balance is $75,000 and the duration is that this reserve will be discontinued once the council chamber's AV upgrade project is completed. Uh, I, I can maybe chime in. Sure, go ahead, Dave. Um, the the transfer to reserve uh, uh, is as part of the council, uh, council policy, um, and um, um, whether whatever the the, the project is, uh, the the transfer to reserve is as per the policy. I think the 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 chamber upgrade is complete, so I think the question is then. We don't need this reserve anymore, so we don't need to do right. a transfer to it. Mr. Mayor, the, the $85,000 transfer from reserve and the 85000 contract to reserve it, they're both in and out, so it has been removed. Okay. That's what's the special of the 18, isn't it? Yeah, the 18 transfer. Oh, the 18 that's in there? There's 18 in, in the reserve? Is that what you're talking about, Councilor Trashka? Each of these I, I followed along and um, matched the reserve up to where it was going, just so I could have a better understanding of, of how how the, the new budget has worked because this is this is set up a different way, um, and and this was uh, one particular reserve that um, it just showed it being discontinued, but we're putting money into it, and I certainly don't oppose that we should have money available for an SDBA hearing. Um, I'm just wondering if that's the right reserve or 
um, maybe we need to make an adjustment to our reserve policy to um, to have a reserve that has uh, the SDAB, or maybe we maybe it's a good idea to continue. I I don't know. Go ahead, Sue Beverage. Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Chachka. So um, there's also elections within here as well, and that we do plan for elections. I'm just going to pull up the uh, account here. You're correct. You're correct, Christine. Yeah, but it comes out of the legislative budget. Yeah. It does. That That is the funding source, is always a legislative budget for elections. Um, just, can you support Leah as far as where this one is? There's Go an ahead. election. Uh, Go ahead, Dave. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, through the council, there is a contribution to an election reserve uh, every four years. But that's just a portion of it, right? Councillor Trachka? Right. So um, if it's my understanding that 18000 is broken down into 3000 going into the elections reserve um, and 15000 into a legislative reserve. Um, and uh, so I would also question um, if the 3000 is enough. Um, so at the beginning of the meeting, I asked about the um, just what process was used to determine how much money to put into the reserves um, and you guys have chosen five years which I, I think generally that's probably uh, fantastic um, to build up those reserves um, but I, I would maybe want to recommend in the elections reserve um, I, I think we were putting ten thousand dollars there uh, because we needed forty thousand dollars to run the election every every four years um, and, and I would probably want to see that continue that way um, and I'm, I'm not sure about the rest of the 15 going to the legislative reserve or if we um, should keep that reserve open for things like the SDAB. And if that's the case, then I'm certainly open to it. Um, I just was reading the policy, that's all. Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor, really you're bang on, um, exactly. Um, Leah can bring up those uh, uh, um, balances if it's required. Uh, we chose uh, what the optimum balance is said in the policy and whatever was deficient over the five years we contributed this year. So I know the elections every four years, we probably should have done this in every four years, but it, 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 it contributes a, enough to the reserve to make sure that uh, its intent is funded. Okay, Councillor Chashka, does that answer what you're looking for here? Yes, yes, so it does answer, sorry, through the chair to uh, administration. It does answer my question, um, but I would put forward a motion later to um, increase the 3,000 from the election reserve to, to 10,000. All right, thank you, Councillor Pasichny. Yeah, through, uh, through the mayor to Dave. Um, is there a reason that we have, we're comparing 23 budget as opposed to 23 actuals? Um, or maybe I'm not understanding this correctly because I, I don't see where we what we spent last year. I'm only seeing what was our because we haven't got our financial statement for 2023 yet, so we don't have the actual actuals. Yeah, is that right, Dave? Let's bear through to the council. Yes, uh, we have a, a, a estimated year in 2020 actual. We when we did our review, we actually looked at 2022 actual and projected 2023 balance. Um, we didn't think it was fair to put those numbers on the screen when we weren't 100% uh, sure of those numbers. All right. Uh, so I think we've, we're done with legislative executive office. And executive office, um, essentially uh, the major, of course, oh, there we are. Um, that includes uh, the CAO, uh, that includes CAO um, as far as a executive assistant as well as the legislative um, and corporate initiatives coordinator, essentially um, all of which support council. Um, and as there isn't, you know, the major changes here is legal. Uh, the increase to legal is um, in some of the areas. Um, so we, in 2023, we actually centralized legal services in order to have a good understanding of what we were actually um, you know, the, essentially that it comes through my office essentially for, um, so we understand what we're spending and how we're spending our legal dollars. And um, with regards to our um, contracts and um, 
you know, tenders, et cetera, that's a part of the increase as well. And of course, this supports our HR matters that we're, we deal with um, on a fairly consistent basis. So um, that's what really makes up that change, um, as well as um, as far as the, the addition of the legislative coordinator to this, this cost area versus being in corporate services. All right, thank you. Council, any questions? Comments? None. Uh, we'll move on to corporate services, human resources. Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mayor. Through you to all the council. Um, I will take us through the next eight departments, uh, starting with human resources. And uh, human resources uh, has the, of course, the human resource manager, a uh, human resource assistant, and the uh, town's safety and risk coordinator. So. Uh, Safety and risk, I think, is fairly straightforward. Human resources, of course, is involved in the uh, recruitment and attraction retention of staff, uh, health and safety, and uh, dealing with in and out of scope in the union. Um, pretty straightforward budget. Uh, you'll see on the overhead uh, a correction for uh, transfers in and out of reserves consistent with policy. You will see that the town has received confirmation that we were not successful with our ACP grant application and will not be getting an intern. And uh, adjustments for cost of living and so forth in the expenditures. Uh, happy to answer any questions that council may have on the Human Resources uh, Budget Centre. Anybody have questions? Seeing none, continue on, Mr. Hamlin. Thank you. Uh, communications. Uh, we do have uh, our, our communications individual here with us tonight. Of course, uh, this is, again, fairly straightforward. There has not been any historic uh, transfers in and out of reserves and uh, really just cost of living and benefits uh, reallocation of the general manager's time reflected in the uh, increase this year. Uh, as shown on the overhead, and uh, that is the communications area. I think we're all quite familiar with it. Happy to answer any questions. We have nobody queued up, so we'll continue to IT. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to all of council. Uh, similarly, uh, we have a, a single IT individual supported by external contract. Um, in this year's budget, we see corrections on transfers to and from reserves and uh, cost of living reallocation of my time um, and uh, slight reduction year over year and uh, really no concerns administratively with the information technology area. Ha happy to answer any questions related to the proposed budget. Councillor Taylor. Yes, yeah, through the mayor to Mr. Hamlin, RJ systems removed, that, is that the, the, the contract just expiring? in 2023 um or just we still have rj systems providing support to the it area so i'm, I'm a little unclear on that statement so um rj remains with us and is continuing on at this time i believe cao beverage has something as well cao beverage oh, thank you mr mara um that was a one-time project um with regards to rj's Yeah, through the CEO, um, like just for 2023, and then it's, it's not continuing at all into this year. Is that my correct, or just still? <laughs> uh, you're through the mayor to Councillor Taylor. Uh, that was a one-time project. It's not. We're not speaking about the UT, uh, the RJ Systems services that they provide. They still are pro definitely providing IT services to the town of Edson. Yes. Thank you. Move on, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to all of council. We are now in the building maintenance area. This is the, uh, we do have a vacancy in this area for the manager position supported by uh, two admins, or excuse me, two uh, staff that assist with the maintenance of our facilities being uh, 12 to 13 facilities owned and maintained by the uh, town of Edson. Um, you do see uh, transfer uh, from reserve consistent with policy and uh, a uh, reduction year over year. I think the reduction year over year is, is really identified that in 2023, we funded and completed the building condition assessment reports for uh, 
for the town facilities, and that's why you see a reduction in expenditures from 23 to 24. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. And cemetery. Again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to all of council. Uh, a slight change in accounting practice for the cemetery in that we are including a portion of the admin assistance uh, wages that have not historically been uh, shown in this area. Uh, it is about 25 to 30 percent of her time and so we're reflecting that you see that in the salary wages and benefits expenditure for this year. Um, that would account for the majority of the increase and uh, we are increasing uh, the cost for a columbarium so contracted and general services has gone up as the cost of brass and uh, the production of uh, the plaques has become essentially twice as expensive as it has been in the past and uh, happy to answer any questions uh, related to this council any questions councillor chachka uh, through the chair to mr hanlon um, how much is getting transferred into the reserve Mr. Hamlin, thing at 78,000. Councillor, Councillor Chatka, through you to all of council, there is in the budget a transfer to reserves of 78,000 for 2024. Yes. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor, Mr. Hamlin, uh, you say that uh, Colibarium plaques have increased, so they've increased the expenditures, correct? Um, do we need to increase fees to compensate? For that, like if someone's purchasing a whatever they need for that, um, sort of the philosophy of the, the cemetery was costs recovery, um, and are we still recovering those costs? Councillor Taylor, to all of council, yes, we are. Thank you, Councillor Chachka. Uh, thanks. That one more question through the chair to Mr. Hanlon. Um, so if the 70, if the entire 78,000 is going into the cemetery reserve, um, I'm just a little bit confused if the optimal balance is a hundred thousand, um, why so much into that reserve? Um, if it's broken up over, I don't know what the current balance is, um, but why, why such a large amount, um, this year, um, if it's broken up over five years? Go ahead, Mr. Allen. Councillor Chachka, if I could, I, I may defer that question to Mr. McReynolds. Are, Dave, are you able to help us with this? I can. <clears throat> I'll have to stop sharing and, and dig into some numbers if that's what the mayor and council would like. While he's pulling that up, I do know we pulled a lot of money out of that reserve to pay for the new Colibarium. I think it was this last year, so I'm thinking the balance is pretty low. Sorry to bear with me, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I apologize. So, Mr. Mayor, the um, the actual amount of seventy eight thousand um, dollars is not all transferred to reserve. It includes the um, interdepartmental charge. the The actual transfer to reserve is nineteen thousand. It's probably mislabeled as a reserve transfer. It should be other transfers. So $19,000 going to reserve and the balance of the 78,000 is internal charge for the support and maintenance of, of the cemetery. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Uh, that answer your question, Councillor Chachka. Okay. Thank you. 
So, yeah, so question to you, Mr. McReynolds, would that apply to other reserve transfers throughout this document, that there could be some internal charges to that? Um, we didn't, we, we, when I run through, we did notice a couple of mislabeled reserves should have been other, and I thought we got them all. We must have missed, missed this one, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will move on to planning if there's other further questions on this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Planning Budget Center, we see, uh, again, very similar to previous years, a uh, correction of uh, the transfer from reserves. Uh, the land use bylaw rewrite is wrapping up and completing. There is a budget, budget carry forward, as uh, Council is aware. We do see a uh, removal of the temporary position in the salary, wages, and benefits area, and uh, the corresponding carry forward for the land use bylaw completion. And uh, with that and the uh, zeroing out of transfer to reserves, so uh, that is the proposed budget for 2024 for the planning area. All right, thank you, Councillor Chachka. Thanks, so through the chair to Mr. Hanlon. Um, before your time, uh, I recall at a budget meeting, we, we discussed some um, uh, money that needed to be kind of put aside every year in the planning department for um, expensive pictures that would take like big GIS uh, mapping, I guess, um, over a community that wasn't done every year, but we put money away for it every year. Um, is that still being done or is that is that part of that 8,000 that's being taken out? Um, maybe it's in a different department, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Mr. Kitlitz? I might be able to help a bit, and if, if not, Mr. McMurrell's going to weigh in, but I, I think what I can tell you is the, the ortho photo um, is in the three-year operating budget for planning. Um, I think it's on schedule for next year. Um, I don't know for sure whether this $8,000 transfer to reserve is for that, um, but I think what's happened here is there is no reserve dedicated, like a reserve probably doesn't include anything for planning and development, so it's been taken out for that reason. So if it was supposed to be allocated towards the ortho photography, um, we didn't include it appropriately in the reserve policy. So if that's something that council wishes to see moving forward, we, when we do bring the reserve policy back for some, for some debate and uh, discussion, I think maybe that's somewhere where we have to, to add it in. So that's my recollection. Mr. Reynolds, if you can, if you have anything else to offer. Um, please no, do. I don't. Thank you. Anything else on this particular matter? Okay, continue on. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Can share the screen. I'm not sure if you see if you see the screen. No, I cannot see a shared screen. Sorry, I cannot see a shared screen. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Helen. Thank you, sir. Um, there has not been another reorganization. You will see on the screen or in the uh, well. I guess now it doesn't. So, um, sir, I'm going to bypass what is shown in the. Uh, slides as public transportation that remains with community and protective services uh, maybe just very quickly i will say it is an area we'll let uh okay we've just gone to economic yeah so public transportation is uh just in the wrong slide location uh i indicated to mr wagstaff i'll cover it um so this is now of course no one has moved edson it's a uh, grant transfer in and out of seventy-six thousand dollars for the edson senior transportation society or move edson and remains with community protective services the next item is economic development okay just hang on one sec so uh just on the public transportation um I guess I'm a little concerned, and this is so minor, but uh, it says transfer payments. I don't know why it doesn't say grant to an organization instead of a transfer payment, or maybe there's a reason for that. Um, and also, I know we pay for, I believe we pay for the fuel and other things for uh, moving Edson. Is there a way that we could include this under this uh, area so we have a clear understanding of how much support the town of Edson is providing? Or is that just too complicated with how our systems are set up? Mr. Wagstaff. And feel free to say I'll take that back and come back to it at some other point. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, exactly. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay, move on, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, sir. Economic development is the uh, next budget center in the uh, corporate services area. It is uh, supported by our economic development officer. Uh, you do see the... Uh, the reduction of uh, reserves and uh, of course the completion of the economic 
development strategy, which was funded in 2023 and has been completed. Um, we do see the economic development officer's salary, as well as the reallocation of a portion of the planning manager's salary and the GM salary, which makes up the uh, increase in the salary wages and benefits area. Contracted in general services, um, we see the removal of the economic development strategy, so that is a reduction in that cost. And uh, so a slight increase year over year. Um, and then there is the automated, there is a included in 2024 is the automated business license uh, project, which forms a part of the $97,300. So we're trying to uh, proceed with that in conjunction with some other IT improvements in the planning area. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Chachka. Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Hanlon. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, under the revenue sources, um, I, I just didn't notice um, any contributions from the budgeted business license fee, and this is coming out of the Economic Development Reserve um, uh, operating uh, budget, um, saying that the so one, one of the sources of funding um, is an annual contribution equal to 50% of the annually budgeted business license fees. Councillor Chachka to all of council. Uh, if, uh, if you don't mind, we'll look at that. And okay. when we bring this back, we'll ensure that uh, transfers to reserves are consistent with the uh, policies adopted by council. All right, uh, subdivision and land. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is uh, this is one that has been essentially quite dormant over a number of years, and uh, is though necessary. So this anticipates the possibility of land sales that is land owned by the. Uh, town of Edson, not limited to just Hillendale, but we've utilized the hypothetical sale of three lots to generate the land sale number there. Um, and so there is a corresponding contracted in general services number that uh, has been developed and identified, essentially closing costs and legal associated with the sale of three. And if there were the three, uh, the sale of three or more properties, essentially anything, uh, that we would net from that sale would return back to that transfer into reserves. Um, so this is, uh, this is a, a budget center where if there is nothing sold, then there is no cost out of this center. And if there is something sold, it's legal and closing costs that would be uh, covered in this area. I'm happy to answer any questions council may have. Council, any questions? So three lots sold in Hillendale, hypothetically, would be a 300% increase in sales, which would be fantastic. Um, this is a big bone of contention of mine, and um, what are we doing with Hillendale? Um, you know, we talked about the housing strategy earlier. Um, you know, I know we've had discussions on looking at different ways in terms of trying to move some lots in Hillendale. Uh, I have indicated, at least my perspective is, we should be trying to do something in order to uh, encourage developments out there. I know we had a pilot program with Build Now, Pay Later. Uh, mm -hmm. That didn't really work out with us uh, during that time. So um, I, I don't know, through the administration, if there are plans on bringing something forward to council, because here we are getting set to another construction season. We haven't changed what we're doing, and this has been a discussion for four years now. So. Um, I'll hand that over to administration if they have any any answers to that, Mr. Hamlin. Thank you, sir. Uh, currently in the planning area, and, and that would include economic development, we're, we're looking at uh, lots that are available to take to market. That includes Hill and Dale. It also includes other surplus properties or potential surplus properties owned by the town of Edson, uh, uh, of course, of which we would have to come to council and seek your direction before listing those. Um, Last year, the administration commenced a investigation of the Hillendale Phase Two area, and we're looking to complete that this year. It is a, a subdivision that has sat for a decade, and so we're looking to confirm the status of servicing and uh, move forward uh, with uh, listing those this year. Uh, Hillendale Phase Two is fairly is is more is is simpler to move forward, hypothetically. 
again, um, we can list them with realtors and uh, move them forward. But uh, it is one of the things that as we bring in a planning manager, we would look to work with economic development to uh, start marketing and, and investigating all potential options to uh, see some development occurring in phase two of Hillendale. And I thank you for that, Mr. Hamlet. And I guess I should mention too, we were also looking at fi finalizing the land use bylaw as well, because that will have an impact on uh, what we can do out in Hillendale. Uh, CEO Beverage. Mr. Mayor, through to council. Um, this is an area, uh, of course, we've, we've talked about Hillendale from the time I arrived. Um, we have been sitting with the vacancy for the planning manager for quite some time. I would say 18 months, or well, at least that. Um, that does pose a challenge, and there was, you know, essentially that that really does um, the focus area that's required. Uh, unfortunately, it just hasn't been there. So I just wanted to be honest with you as far as why this is not ramped forward. It's essentially um, it's on the side of the desk um, just for that reason. So, and I and I appreciate that that the honesty there, uh, CEO Beverage, because. We, we get frustrated when things aren't done and then we don't realize that while well, we have vacancies and side of people's desks that's why the land use by law didn't get done for so long so um sometimes i even forget that we are missing resources and that's why we're not able to uh, accomplish some of these things councillor taylor yeah through the mayor to to council and administration uh, first of all you brought up the land use bylaw. that's what i was going to say um, essentially things have been stagnant because we're waiting to complete that document because that doc the changes within there changes perhaps how we can how a developer can can develop or have show homes or, or those types of things and we had lots of different restrictions on it before making it really difficult and at the end of the day too uh, this this really reinforces the idea of the housing strategy whenever we talk about hill, hill and day of phase two we always say all right what are we doing with that and there is silence because we're not housing strategists we we, we don't know it's not not our world this is why i think that study is is uh, very important to the process uh, and it's going listen it's going to take time there's not, we know across Canada there's there's not a lot of houses being built not without grant money so um, you know it's, it's that process I think we have to have that plan first and then and then we can solve the issue of Hillendale one lot is a hundred thousand dollars nine million dollar dimension yeah uh, thanks through the chair to councillor and Edwin. Um, just a few weeks ago, I was talking to a contractor in Edson and he said, hey, I was thinking about doing that buy now, pay later in Hillendale. And he was serious about it. And I said, hey, you know what? Like, that's fantastic. I'm like, I don't know if the program's still up. I said, but come and talk to administration. I said, I'm sure council is willing to entertain the conversation. So I did not. Um, so I said, we are certainly willing to entertain the conversation. Um, go talk to your administration and, um, and then they can bring that back to council if, if that's something that seems worthwhile to you. So you never know. There, there's a seed planted out there with one person. Excellent. Uh, moving on. Infrastructure and operations. I think you're done, Mr. Henlin. Thank you very much. I am. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kitlitz, you're on the hot seat. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Um, I'm very happy to be able to present uh, this budget to, to council tonight. Um, but before I get started, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the, the, the monumental efforts of my managers in the, in the division that uh, really did the bulk of the work on this with the help of Mr. McReynolds and um, Ms. Sergian, um, going through um, this operating budget uh, line by line and putting the requisite amount of, of time and detail into it. So I wouldn't be able to present it here confidently to you tonight if it wasn't for, for their efforts. So I wanted to make sure I acknowledge that. Um, Public Works and Fleet. Um, so this is the, the department that uh, basically helps all the other operational departments uh, do their work and provide services to the community. Um, they sort of keep the public workshop and building in order. Uh, the yard and then more most importantly they take care of our fleet um, just quickly um, there's 39 light ve fleet vehicles in the, in the in the in the fleet there's 54 larger pieces of equipment which are like back coast tandems excavators all that stuff um, we have two mechanics um, that work on that fleet and uh, a supervisor now that, to help with uh, the procurement and uh, developing that fleet management plan in terms of the budget, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, not a lot of uh, changes or adjustments this year, and you're going to find that with most of the budget uh, and op infrastructure and operations. Uh, most of the adjustments are just based on some, some actuals, um, review of the actuals and, uh, and the transfers to the reserves, which uh, Mr. McReynolds has already talked about. Any questions on this particular? Don't see any. We'll continue on. 
Um, next is another big one, roads. Um, the roads department obviously is responsible for, for, for taking care of uh, all the road network within the town of Edson, both summer and winter programs. Um, won't go into a lot of details here, but there's about 80, just over, not just over 83, 88 kilometers of paved roads in town, um, 58 kilometers of sidewalks, and about 34 kilometers of rural roads. Um, this department also takes care of the stormwater management facilities and, and keeps the water flowing in our culverts and, and drainage systems. Um, Donable items in this budget are, you'll notice that uh, there's $300,000 uh, that's a transfer in and out of reserve for the stormwater condition assessment. Council may recall this was on the capital plan for 2023, and then uh, when we came for spring budget adjustments in April last year, I asked Council if we could defer this um, because we just were, we didn't have quite enough capacity. We had a vacancy at the time in our, in our capital projects area, so it was just a bit of a load. Uh, thankfully, Council agreed to do that, and uh, this is showing up now in the operating rather than capital. Um, it's the same way we handled the sanitary sewer condition assessment. It was, a, it was an operating fund from reserves, so that's where we placed it this year. Um, and then the other, the other things, there's some minor adjustments for, for extra supplies. If you recall, Council also supported a, a new road patching trailer this year in Capital. Um, there's some extra supplies needed to, to support that particular program. So happy to answer any questions in this area. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, to the Mayor, to uh, Mr. Kitlitz. Uh, um, last year we purchased a um, crack sealer, right? Um, and I remember seeing the map at the end of how much they completed. And obviously there's a training and those other <coughs> things. And I always go back to Councillor Petitioning's points, you know, if we can't fix the roads, we got to maintain them. Um, and we have this great machinery. I would like to make, like, very good use of it. And, and do we have enough manpower to, to continually use that? Or do we, is it necessity? I know last year we... We had, I think, a couple summer students we had uh, also took on as well. I don't know if that's included in this section um, uh, about just getting out and tarring the roads and just maintaining them. Um, is that something that's been taken into consideration with this as well so that we make good bang for a buck on the crack sealer and uh, whether or not we included a few extra staff to continue to, with the extra tarring if that needs to happen? Yeah, thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Taylor. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, you're right. I think uh, it took it took staff a while to get used to the piece of equipment and, and learn how to operate it as efficiently as it was as designed to do. And um, once they got going, they they progressed pretty fast. Um, it takes one operator and, and two laborers or summer students to 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 make the unit work. Um, I think, and, and it's, it's unfortunate, uh, Mr. O'Sullivan couldn't be here tonight. He's in, in training um, out of town, but. Um, I think uh, our, our hope is, um, with what we learned last year, that this is going to be sort of like a, a two-year program. We should be able to do the whole town every two years um, is kind of what we're, we're gunning for. Um, they did make pretty good progress. I know um, there was some commentary that they were hope the council was hoping to see more, but it really just took some time for us to get proficient on the, on the new piece of equipment. So. Councillor Trachka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the chair to council and admin. Um, and, and so, and just to further your comment there, we were also evacuated for a short period of time. So um, that might've had something to do with it too. Uh, my question is regarding um, a few, um, that the line painting will be completed again this year. Um, I, I, I'm asking if the trails are, I know you said we have 58 kilometers of sidewalks. I don't know if you're including trails in that or if trails are included in this budget um, and if we'll have maintenance on those. Um, the additional snow removal, I think we added 50,000 to the snow removal budget. Is that included in this budget that we did last year? And is that concurrent that it stays in the budget this year? I just, I know with the way you guys have made some adjustments, I, I'm just, I wanna make sure that that's still included. Um, and um, yes, I think those are my questions there. Okay, now I, now I gotta try to remember which trail through them were. Uh, first one was, oh no, trails. So, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the trails aren't included in the roads budget. That's in the parks parks budget, the recreational trails. Uh, this sidewalks are all the sidewalks that are adjacent and in within the road road right of ways. Um, line painting, um, yeah, the tenders already went out for line painting, um, um, so that's included in this this operating budget year over year. We'll just continue to keep that money in there for for line painting to to build that program and continue it going. And then the third one was the snow clearing. Um, the $50,000, I think, was extra for contracted service support if we needed it. I think that's what it was for, if I'm trying to remember uh, correctly. Right, that was to, yeah, to utilize yeah. contracted yeah. services more um, often. That's, that still remains in the budget, so we've kept that in there, um, status quo. 
And I'd, I'd like to mention too, I did look at the line painting tender and I noticed that every single turning line was included this time. So good work on getting that all updated. So, uh, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to Mr. Kitlitz. So the under contract and general services, uh, storm sewer and sidewalk projects, those are the uh, like approved, are those the capital pro those aren't the capital projects we've approved, right? Or are those just general maintenance of said things? So through you, Mr. Mayor, if you look at the, the, the this sheet up on the, on the screen, that there's $300,000 noted up on the top half, um, yeah. other transaction, transaction revenues. That's the $300,000 $300, funded reserves for the s storm sewer condition assessment study. So that we have to have it in and out. Okay. Um, and so that's what it represents. And, and the sidewalk program is, is continues to be in. in uh, I think there's $100,000 a year for the sidewalk program that was approved a couple of years ago. So that's in there. Uh, so so I'll just now focus on sidewalks. Um, so for the 100000 that we use to just maintain and repair sidewalks, it's mostly repair, actually, at the end of the day, how, like how much do we get out of that? Like how, like, on a block-wise, you know, yeah, I don't know, like yeah. it, it, a lot of sidewalks in town, and hundred grand sometimes doesn't go as far as we think it goes. Um, to your Mayor, I don't have the exact... Um, I don't know how to quantify that because it could be anything from just shaving off a, a ridge to replacing a panel. But um, let me look into that and so maybe we can get uh, um, some data or just at least some mapping to show the, because I'm pretty sure the staff map it. So we'd be able to show some graphics of what areas we've done and, and what we can get done for 100,000. But it, it could vary based on what we have to do. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, and just based on that, like, based on what you find that may be an area that I would be interested in, in sort of you know increasing it. But once we have... The, sure. the data with that yep. and then with the man i got my glasses it's getting late um the storm sewer um and that's just again that's general ma maintenance or or looking at those types of things right so through you mr mayor so what this is this is an assessment of our actual system very similar right. to what you saw uh, presented to council with the sanitary sewer condition assessment which yes. told council where our problem areas where we're to focus our capital investments over the next few years where our maintenance should be. We're hoping to get the same type of product out of this particular study. Okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, just uh, kind of on that note, I know that we have been investigating the infiltration uh, in uh, the southwest court quadrant of our community. Uh, do we have an update on that or is, uh, are we going to include some funds because I know that we're looking at we think we might actually find what the problem was yeah uh, thank you mr. mayor for the question it's a it's a saga it's been quite the the, the investigation uh, with Darren and his staff and, and the consultant um, our latest focus was the, the piece of sanitary pipe that runs behind the RCMP station over Bench Creek down uh, First Avenue I believe um, we thought that that was the source because it wasn't Glenwood. Um, after investigation by utility staff, it was determined that Glenwood was not the problem. Um, it turns out that that's not the problem either. Um, there was a there's a gasket uh, within that pipe that uh, is misaligned and covering up. What? How much was it, Darren? About a third of the pipe. About a third of the pipe. So, uh, and there was I think manhole sensor at the top end of that when the study was being done. So we think what had happened is because of that, there was solids backed up and that pipe was filling up and it was causing the manhole sensor to misread. So we don't have, uh, we're still working on it. And so um, the source and the, and, and, and the end result is still trying to be determined. But what I can share with council is once we determined it, um, um, McElhaney will be back uh, in council chambers um, to, to, to have a chat what was found through this investigation and what has changed, if anything, or, or where it is or where it isn't. So uh, ongoing still, but yeah. All right, thank you, Councillor Taylor. And, and sorry, through the mayor, and on that note, uh, I like I'm two words excited. Excited is the wrong word, but it's the only word I can think of right now. Uh, excited to hear what they have to see back, and if see if we can repair it this year. Uh, I think it was was it seventeen percent yeah. of our info like was from this particular issue, um, and could be causing a lot of other issues yeah. in the northern part of the town. So yeah, and and I guess just to follow up, Mr. Mayor. I think what we're, we're everything that we're pointing to right now is that that 17% was was inaccurate. It doesn't actually exist. So unless we find something else that we haven't found yet, but everything that we're pointing to now seems that that might have just been a, an inaccurate analysis or inaccurate data. So, but uh, we will come back with a with a full uh, report of, of what we found once we've 
come to the bottom of the mystery. All right, thank you. Um, any further questions on this item? All right, let's fly over to the airport. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> so uh, the airport uh, is, uh, an, uh, I tried to find a different word for, different word for this, but it, I couldn't find one. Um, an unmanned facility regulated by the federal government, which means we, it's not, there's not an air traffic controller at our airport. Um, we have an operator there who maintains uh, the, the runway um, to ensure that it's uh, suitable for landing. Um, we average about uh, just under 2,000 landing and takeoffs at that airport a year. So it's a pretty, pretty active airport. Um, basically what happens out there is the operations is just about maintaining that runway and that facility uh, for the service. So um, it also, we generate revenue in the airport through leasing uh, space for, for private aircraft hangars and parking. And our, our biggest uh, tenant out there is Alberta, the Alberta Wildfire uh, Bomber Base. So. Um, in terms of the budget itself, um, most it's just about uh, um, increased systems, supplies, and materials based on, on inflation and, uh, and actuals. And then also we had to beef up the contracted services a little bit this year. Um, our previous contractor that supported, um, so we have one operator out there, so we had contracted services to back that, that operator up when, when he needed his time off. Um, mm -hmm. That previous contractor is retired, so we had to, to source another one, um, and those costs increased a little bit for that contractor. and. Uh, uh, our manager has a, a future plan that we hope to bring to council on future budgets to talk about how we can source our staff at the airport. But that's where we're at this year. Council, any questions? Councillor Moore. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, through uh, Mr. Kitlitz. Um, how much do we derive, if any, uh, uh, cash-wise from uh, the occasional uh, uh, Canadian Forces drop uh, parachutists and such? Um, Thierry Smear, that's a great question. Um, I believe, other than the fact that they land and take off from our airport, there's a there's a, a landing and a takeoff fee that's levied. So I would assume, just like any other aircraft that lands there, we levy the same uh, uh, cost. But I'll check just to make sure. Maybe there's a, maybe there's an exemption for for federal aircraft. I don't know for sure, but uh, um, yeah, that's how it would be tracked. Thank you. The Fed should not be let off the hook for any charges. Um, so we, can we charge him a Edson carbon tax? Um, question on the airport. Uh, so I seen a video of an airplane landing at our airport, which is really cool to watch. And I seen the overview of our um, runway. Um, it's certainly showing its age. And I've brought this up previously that we are not putting any money aside uh, for the airport. And when that time comes, there is going to be a massive bill uh, to repave and upgrade. And we, the airport is not used by everyday citizens, but it is such a critical infrastructure piece in our community with wildfire and stars and just for the economic uh, piece to this. Um, so um, as you look here, I don't see any transfers to reserves. Uh, for specifically for the airport and the federal and provincial governments don't provide a lot of support uh, when it comes to maintaining airports and we've we've added our names to some advocacy efforts on that so um, I guess where are do do we have a really good idea or do we even have an idea of when we're going to have to replace that runway or upgrade it um, because uh, looking at that video is that I should share it out to council and then you compare it to some of the other way, runways out there, you know, it's starting to show its age. And I think it was, if I remember correctly, paved in the 1980s. So, um, Mr. Kitlitz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a really good question. I was, I was, while you were speaking, I was pulling out the capital plans to see if we, we had something on there. And there's an apron extension on there, but there's not uh, identified at this point uh, uh, a rehab of that runway. So um, I'm going to have to take a look back at some records and see if we have something. But... Uh, Definitely a really good point. <laughs> um, that's probably not a, a cheap uh, item to, to redo that runway. So thank you for the question. Yeah, and once again, it's just making sure that we, we're we prepared for when that time comes. Not that that's going to happen tomorrow. But Peter Taylor, sorry, Councillor Taylor. <laughs> it's okay. I got, I'm going to call lots. Um, but that would be uh, a cost shared for the county, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. For a capital? Okay. Uh, potentially, yeah. Potentially, okay. Current, yeah. All right, thank you. 
Uh, Councilor Trotschka. Uh, thanks. So through the chair to council. Um, yes, this was something that came up a few years ago. Um, it was brought to our attention that I think another airport, uh, and and I'm I, I, okay. Was it? And I think it was like ten million dollars or or something ish. Like it was in that ballpark, um, which is like yeah, a lot of money. Um, and and we did put some advocacy efforts to AM to try to find a better, more equitable way to to fund those types of projects. Um, I, I would be interested if if administration can come back with. Um, how other airports are funded um, when they have to fix their runways and um, if it's just something they have to bite the bullet on themselves or um, or how they do it um, because yeah that that it, that was a few years ago it was like 10 million dollars yikes that's all I have to say is yikes <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Pasichny actually uh, through the mayor to uh, Mr. Kitt let's um, actually a little bit further on to what uh, Councillor Peter Taylor said um, it is a cost share facility, so it's one of those things if we're starting to plan uh, for the future, we need to be doing that in conjunction with our partners. We absolutely do, but we also need to put money aside. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I, would, I would argue, and this is a bigger discussion, is that we need to start having discussions with our partners that we're both putting money aside, um, or we include it in our operational budget, and they're contributing to that, so when that time comes, that money is sitting there. Um, so... Um, anyway, uh, we'll move on to the next item. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. One, one tidbit of information that, in relation to that that I can speak to. We, we actually, uh, Mr. Sullivan and I just met with uh, Yellow County representatives on the airport uh, cost share agreement, with, which did expire this year, and we were just going to extend it for another year. Um, they came back and requested that we, it, really the, the, the agreement's pretty good. We didn't have any changes, not at a day, but they asked for us to extend it for five years with an option for a five-year extension. So they're looking for a long-term commitment on that cost share um, and I think um, you know we're I think we're supportive of that as well so that's just a, some really recent information on negotiating with that cost share with them so and correct me if I'm wrong they pay for capital but they don't pay no no there's operating as well operating right. operating and capital because yeah. I I think yeah yeah, yeah. you bet yeah yeah okay because I was I was under the impression that they don't pay a piece of something but I can't remember what it was when we uh, when we had an upgrade or something that we needed to do at the airport that they didn't pay into the upgrades to the terminal, to the mm -hmm. terminal. Interesting. Okay. No, I'm pretty sure we have both. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on to. Mr. Mayor. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Dave. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, can I uh, request a two minute comfort break? <laughs> yes, for sure. We'll take a two minute comfort break. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you uh, for that break. And uh, we will resume. Uh, I do believe before we move on with Mr. Kitlitz, I'll just hand things over to CEO Beverage so she can get whatever she needs to do here <laughs> off her mind. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I always like to um, address when I've made a, an error. Um, so the legislative item, Councillor Chachka, yes, you are absolutely correct. That should have been removed. That was uh, with regards to the reserve. That was an error on our part. We That 15000 is specific to that should have not been included within the presentation. So we do apologize. That will be addressed when we bring it back. So thank you for catching that. That seems so long ago. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Gitlitz. This information really ruined my flow. Um, just to confirm, we did check at the break the, the agreement with the cost share, Mr. Mayor, and it, there is operating and capital within the, the airport. And Mr. Barisco whispered in my ear that maybe what uh, we were thinking about is when parks moved over to the airport, there was some stuff there that might have happened, and, and that wasn't part of the cost share for sure. So no, it been, wasn't in relation to that. But oh, yeah, okay. 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 All right, then we will carry on. Yeah. Uh, to our engineering department, um, slash, uh, we hope to rebrand to infrastructure, which is uh, uh, Mr. McHale's department. Um, obviously, uh, with uh, the restructure, this is the department's going to take care of the majority of our capital, our capital planning and project delivery for, for the roads, utilities, and, and parks areas. Um, facilities will still remain with the facilities manager. Um, so, again, tip, this, th there's not a lot of big changes that will there is, but uh, they're basically related to the, the position that council supported through the, the, uh, the initial budget and then uh, removal of uh, some funds for the, the, the standards, um, which is uh, just to carry over a portion of those funds. And also, I should also mention that this department also deals with the asset management system. Um, and I say system because asset management is not just this department's responsibility. 
Um, every operating department has a role in asset management. They must take care of their own assets, manage your assets. Um, this department just takes make sure the system is there and in place and the training and the help to, to support those functions. So, Questions there? Okay. Uh, Councillor Chachka. Thanks. So through the chair to you, Mr. Kitlitz. Um, this is one of, another item that um, I, I don't know if it got into our reserve policy when, when we made it. Um, was a few years back we, um, I, I think we did, anyway, start allocating money um, for annual bridge, ins or for bridge inspections because we weren't like saving money and then all of a sudden we had to do bridge inspections and it was like a big, um, a big fee. Um, is that something that we're still allocating um, in this budget going forward um, to kind of uh, have more consistent costs on, on those types of, um, I guess, semi or I don't know how often you do bridge inspections, so. Yeah, um, thank you for the questions, Mr. Mayor. I believe the bridge inspections are on a five-year cycle. Um, actually, if I look in Questica, I'll know because it tells me. Um, but what I can confirm pretty confidently is that we are not setting money aside for that, um, other than it being tracked in our budget. But I, I guess maybe I should clarify, are you asking about the money to do the inspections or actually the money to maintain and repair our bridges? Because those are two different things. Um, um, both. Okay. So, um, but, I, but I think specifically we were putting money, we, or we weren't putting money aside and then we had to do some inspections and we're like, oh, maybe we should put some money aside. Um, and, and I'm wondering if when we did our reserve policy that um, that we kind of looked at that in a silo um, with a couple things, and, and I think those bridge inspections, maybe they weren't included, I'm, I'm not sure, um, but I think it's probably worthwhile to have them included, especially if they are costly. Um, and then I would hope that we would also include annual maintenance. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I did confirm it's every five years for the inspections, and we just completed them in 2022, um, but I'm pretty sure we are not, uh, we don't have a reserve to set aside for the, for the cost to, to fix. CEO Beverage. Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Chachka and, and the rest of Council. So through the reserve policy, I mean, it's a very specific reserve policy. Um, it is not explicitly stated. I've checked through the, uh, all of the, the centres there. Um, and that's something that we are going to be bringing this back. I can assure Council that just um, having such specific reserves, it's actually not, it's more of a hindrance than it is. Um, and just having more general um, reserves that will help also. So, and we're able to, yeah, thank you. All right, I'll continue on, Mr. Mayor. Um, Dave, come back. We're gonna are we gonna move a slide, Dave? Please. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, the next two are our utilities uh, systems. Uh, first being the water system. Obviously, the water utility department provides or draws, treats, and distributes water um, to our municipalities in compliance. And this is an important part with our our, our Alberta, Alberta Environment and Protected Areas license. Um, our license has a, a lot of, um, dictates how we do this and, and when and why and how, so there's a lot to it. Um, I won't go over a lot of the details in here. Um, we have a little bit of a change with our revenues. We, we've had pretty good sales for our bulk water, so we've, we've put in a little extra revenue for that based on actuals. And then the other big things are the transfer to reserve that uh, Dave worked on to fix. Um, and in this case, it's uh, $827,000 plus that's being transferred into our water reserve uh, to balance this budget. Questions? Um, so yes, uh, you said you're we're putting eight hundred and twenty-seven thousand into reserves from water. And uh, Dave, can you speak to that? Like, what? Why the change there? Or, uh, what? What has changed? Well, thank you for the question, Mr. Mayor, and through the council. <clears throat> um, I said in the beginning, uh, the utility fund should be treated as its own fund. So you tax funded and utility funded. The utility, uh, uh, water, sewer, uh, waste, recycling are all uh, utility fees. They're not property taxes. And uh, you can see in, in the 2023 budget on this screen, $302,000 of utility rates were transferred to tax funded operations. And and that that is not what the, uh, uh, utility funded uh, pro uh, uh, program should be. It should be all utility funded uh, revenue should I be con uh, contributing to the, uh, uh, the operations and then contributing to reserves. So um, the goal is to have a balanced water, sewer, 
waste and recycling program and all those rates uh, fund those programs and any surplus funds go to reserve. Excellent. I love hearing that. Um, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I echo that. That's exactly what we want. I know that we, we've talked about moving towards a, a cost recovery in some way, but we also need to recycle those dollars in there because one of the biggest issues we're facing into the future is water. Okay. And, you know, we had a study on like list of wells and there's going to come times when we're, you know, going to have to drill more wells. And, um, uh, I guess the question is when we look at utility rates themselves, when are we planning to speak about those rates within this process? Is that soon or? That's well, there's no proposed rate increases. No, oh, no um, it's, it's not an annual thing that we look at. So I, I, I don't know, maybe CEO Beveridge wants to speak to this uh, a little uh, because I, I believe through this budgeting process, uh, what we're seeing here is that we are cost recovery um, and that the money that uh, that surplus money is going into reserve to help pay for some of that infrastructure. Uh, CEO Beveridge. Mr. Mayor, you've captured it correctly. That is exactly the position, position that we're in. Uh, Councillor Trachka. Thanks. Uh, through the chair to council and admin. Um, so although um, we are putting $800,000 into reserves, um, my, my concern is that um, when we did the asset management plan in 2019, um, it actually showed that in order to maintain over 20 years, and, and this, I realize the information um, you know, has been updated perhaps, right? And, and that some of it, some of the things that we had to repair there, maybe we don't have to repair exactly. So it's very rough and approximate information um, is how I, how I view it. Um, but nonetheless, it, it did show that in order to maintain the underground infrastructure um, over a 20 year period, um, we would have to put away $1.1 million a year um, in reserves to be able to draw from that to pay for those projects. Um, and some years you would have more money spent on that than others, um, of course, just based on how, how it works. But um, so that's my question to admin is that how do we know that this is enough over the next even 10 years that um, and within our, our asset management plan that that is sufficient? Who would like to take that on? Mr. Kitlet. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question and through you, Mr. Mayor. So that, that's a really great question. It's a question probably most municipalities across this country are asking themselves. Uh, we don't have uh, an answer for that. Um, you mentioned the 20, 2018 uh, sustained uh, the study, municipal servicing study. Um, we haven't done as, as good a job as we should have in, in maintaining that data and maintaining those records and, and the systems to, to be able to accurately say. Um, but I'm going to suggest if it was $1.1 million in 2018, it's probably more than that today. So um, this is a great step. I think what we've managed to find and, and work into to this budget is a much larger con contribution than we've done in the past, which I think is a positive. Um, but certainly um, your question is noted um, as, as we continue to grow and, and build our asset management system and this new infrastructure department that, that's been created, um, we're going to endeavor to have those answers for council so that you know what that number is and then we can make decisions based on that. But right now, um, admittedly, we just don't have the accuracy to, to predict that number, but it's low, guaranteed. Councillor Presichny? Yeah, through the mayor to Councillor Tashka, it's, uh, it's never enough. Yeah. We'll never have enough reserves to handle all the projects. I mean, the minute you think you're caught up, then the boost pressure sends, goes down and then the whole neighborhood has no water pressure like my house. Um, so, uh, but it, it just shows up. And, and so really at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I, I like the new process. I like the, the fact that we're, when there is surpluses in there that we're putting into water reserves because we have unforeseen things. So um, it's in the right direction. And, and years ago when we started going away from tax supported utilities to have a um, utility supported by the user fees, uh, it's a nice direction and I'm glad to see it. Uh, Mr. McReynolds. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to the council. I, I'd just like to offer some comments. Um, I've, I've done a lot of utility rate reviews for, for municipalities and uh, reserve reviews for uh, municipalities. And I can tell you, your town is in a very good position. 
Um, it may not be in the op optimum position, but you are in a very good position. So I would recommend two things, a, a reserve review in 2023, uh, uh, 2024, and a um, uh, utility rate review in 2024. I don't think you're far off from your optim optimum your, uh, re uh, reserve contributions. And I think, I really do think that um, the amount that you're putting in reserve is admirable. And I think um, you're not far off of what you need. Thank you, Councillor Trotchka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the chair to Council and Admin, um, I, I will gently remind us of a, a presentation we had by um, a previous employee. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he had four main points that he left with us. Um, the first one was that uh, we're licensed to produce 85 liters of water per second, and currently we can only produce 46 liters of water per second in reality. So um, that's based on how I understand it, that the, as if Hallandale phase two was completely built, right? That it would also include that into there. Um, it isn't, so that's why we maybe aren't experiencing um, the ability, like that, that's why we're still able to make enough water for our community because we haven't requested it, I believe, um, is kind of how I understand that. But nonetheless, we need to drill more wells. Um, or at least be able to produce more water. Second point was um, we have many 70 to 90 year old pipes um, in service um, that are nearing the end of life. I, I think some of those are gonna be addressed soon. I think one of them might be on our plan for this year. Um, no, it was seventh to ninth and 48th to 51st area. Um, and then the third item was uh, future regulatory issues, um, like with the fluoride, the standardized fluoride. Um, so we are working on some of that right right away. Um, and the fourth, believe it or not, was um, some pressure zone issues. Um, one identified was the North Area and Tiffin. There's a pump house issue uh, there. So um, I don't know. Someone else might know what that's all about, but um, it, it needs refurbishing, I guess. So, um, so those are some things that were brought to our attention. And um, if, if we have enough money in reserves, then my question to admin is how can we spend it fast enough to, to achieve those issues? So I think this goes back to, and sorry to kind of jump in here, is the resourcing. Uh, you need staff in order to build these capital projects. You need contractors' availability to do them. Um, and there's only so much capacity, but Mr. Kitlitz, I don't know if that's... <laughs> I, I, I can't offer anything else, Mr. Mary. Yeah, you're right, it's not just the staff, it's, a, it's a, the engineering professionals. Uh, I think some of the things that we've heard or observed is after um, the fire season, um, some of the engineers, that they had they had to wait, like they had to bat, they were backed up, and now they're so busy this year that uh, you know we're we're finding our response times on some of our stuff is actually delayed this year over previous years. So everyone's just busy. There's a lot of work and not enough people and money to do it. So uh, that's really the answer. It's 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 a hard, it's a crux for sure. Um, I wish I had a silver bullet for it. I really do. And, and I realize it's more of a comment than yeah. I, and that I'm going to actually get an answer out of it. But but I guess something to consider, right, is that um, that we're having, a, I guess, a bottleneck there with, with trying to achieve some of those things. And I do have one more question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so previously we were, and I, I guess this wasn't in policy, this was just more of a, um, a common agreement maybe with council and admin previously that we would have an annual increase on our water based on the asset management plan recommendations of 2.2% per year. So is that happening um, in that? And, and I think that was for for the capital portion as well. It was yeah. that, that we were doing an increase to make sure that we were cost recovery every year for operational. And then I believe that 2.2 was for um, a capital increase. That's a good question. Sorry, just to, to, to you, Mr. Mayor. So that was uh, on the rates at 2.2 .2 for rate increases or just um, increasing our operating and our capital contributions it was a rate increase okay oh really on water yeah and then a different one for sewer yeah i think that was the recommendation go ahead mr mayor uh, through to councillor uh, chachka it is a is a recommendation within the uh, asset management 2018 report yes and so i remember seeing it you're you're absolutely correct so i know miss veerboom has her hand up because we are going to be uh hitting our Closing time um, at 10 o'clock. Uh, so, Ms. Veerboom, uh, just a matter of process. Can I take a motion right now? Or uh, because we already have a motion on the floor, can you speak to that? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I 
if I could just defer to CAO on that, I'm actually not clear on that process. Yeah, can we table the motion that's on the floor and then put a new motion on the floor? Miss Mayor, that would be the cleanest way to do it. Yes. Okay. Um, so do you need, geez, do we need to table, a uh, motion to table the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, you would table the, the motion that is on, currently on the floor, which is to approve the um, uh, operating budget presentation. Okay, table chair, that motion, yes, because you chair, have to vote on the that. The chair can do that? Yes. Or do, okay, or do I need a motion to table it? We would need a motion to table. Okay, can I get a motion to table the motion? <laughs> 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 Councillor Taylor? I'm really scared to do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Do we just want to vote by hand, or do you have it up there, Amanda? Just for making it easier? Um, if we could just vote this one by hand, please. Yes. All those in favor? Motion carried. Can I get a motion, please, to extend the uh, the meeting past three hours? Councillor Taylor? I so move. Thank you. All those in favor? Motion carried. And now what I do with the table motion? Now you have to remove it from the table or lift it from the table. Can I get a motion to remove the tabling of the motion? Well, no, motion to remove the table. Lift, lift the tabling of the motion. I hate government. Taylor, Councillor Taylor. Just, I so move. Let's do this. <laughs> All those in favor, motion carried. All right, continuing on to our regular scheduled programming. Thank you, Ms. Veerboom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Taylor. Okay, so... Uh, first of all, I was, I'm happy to hear about the utility rate review. I think it's always important to look at the rates. I know we did not so long ago, but it's, I agree with Councillor Chetje. We're, we're like, we have to sustain our water, uh, whether it's drill wells and those types of things. And I make it very simplistic. There is honestly, and I, as a father with two young kids, there is absolutely nothing worse than having the hottest day of the year and the spray park is closed. Like we have this beautiful spray park and honestly it, it and you know, they go, oh, we can keep it open when it's 18 degrees out. Well, that's not good. We want it open when it's 28 degrees out. Right. So, and, and I do hear it from residents that they can't water their lawns and those, you know, there's restrictions. What are we doing about it? Well, you know, we've made it this far. This is good. This is like, and, and, but more work needs to be done uh, in the future. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. None. We will move on to sewer. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Another big one. Again, it's oh, you. Sorry. Right. CO beverage. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I just want to, um, for council's benefit, 2024 is going to be very ambitious um, for the UT I believe, and until our CFO starts, I'd like to give them the opportunity just to evaluate what we have in front of us just at this point in time. I, I, I'm noting this as just, I don't want to overpromise here just for the utility rate review. Um, I would allow, I would like to allow for our CFO to get started and be able to provide us information with, information with regards to what that's going to undertake. That's all, thank you. All right, Mr. Gitlitz. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the other big utility, the sanitary sewer utility, um, again, pretty straightforward. Again, it's, it's a licensed utility. Uh, we have a license with the province, again, that uh, requires us to operate that waste, our wastewater treatment plant uh, 365 days a year, 24-7. Um, um, and believe it or not, we have to test, send in water test sampling every day for that, for that plant. It's a requirement of our license. So uh, lots of work. Um, this this uh, function, this department also takes care of the backflow preventer program, pilot program that council uh, supported last year. And uh, we're proposing to keep that program as an ongoing program within this budget. So that's what you'll see there. Um, in terms of the big uh, budget items, it's really um, just a removal of uh, the sanitary sewer condition assessment project that was a one time um, that we removed that from the budget. And then obviously, again, this is another rather large uh, transfer uh, transfer to balance this budget of over a million dollars going into the sanitary um, sewer uh, reserve. So uh, we're actually transferring between water and sewer $2.7 million into reserve uh, for underground infrastructure? Uh, no, about 1.8, I think, right? 827 and 1 million. 
Those numbers there that you're seeing there, it says other transactions, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Oh, right. Okay. The, the actual you. transfer reserve is 1,067,630. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. For that clarification. Um, moving. Oh, Councillor Trotschka. Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair to administration. So um, I, I think this is the right area for this question. Um, so the $14.50 on our utility bill for the um, replacement of our wastewater treatment plant into the long, long time future. Um, so are those included in these water and sewer reserve transfers? Because those are dedicated funds for um, for the rebuilding of that project in many, many years from now. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. So I, I don't believe it's the same. I think be, that, that those funds are built into this utility rate model. So the, the rates that we collect, um, that portion is going into reserve. This extra transfer is on top of that. And maybe um, I'll turn to Mr. Reynolds to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the way it works. No, that's correct, Clayton. So where where is that in the budget, the the four, fourteen dollars on our monthly bill? There there is a wastewater uh, future wastewater treatment plant reserve um, that all the uh, contribution off of the bills go into that is part of the transfer of the reserve. So it is included. Yeah, because it goes okay. to different reserves, right? Yeah, okay. it's a one number, but it goes to different reserves. We can't spend the whole one point eight. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay. I'm just about done here, Mr. Mayor. The next uh, couple will be a bit quicker, I think. Uh, the next is our, our waste cost center. This is our curbside waste, um, curbside um, organics and uh, uh, waste. This is a contract service. Um, it's uh, essentially a zero balance. Um, we collect rates and we pay for the contract service along with a little bit of uh, interdepartmental labor. All right, thank you. Any questions on waste? Yeah. Um, next, Mr. Mayor, is our landfill. Um, this is a class three landfill licensed to accept uh, construction and demolition waste only. Um, we cannot accept wet waste at our landfill. Any of that uh, is transported to the Hinton landfill. Um, uh, Big change, or sorry, the, the notable changes for this particular budget is where metal, metal price for metals is, is good, and we, we're making good revenue on our, our metal sales every year. And, uh, and then there's a some bit of a shuffle with how we were recording the, the, the reclamation transfer. And if you have questions with that, uh, Dave should probably be able to answer them. But other than that, it's a, a fairly status quo budget. Waste is an expensive business. Uh, Councillor Trotschka. Uh, thanks. So through the chair to um, maybe to council, um, what does the local region uh, plan, uh, the Hinton landfill plan for landfill fee, landfill fees in 2024? Are they proposing an increase? Um, so uh, we have not got our financial re uh, final financials for this past year yet. Um, and I think that anything that we have, I can't even recall. I'm sorry. Um, I can look into that for you, though. Um, I don't know if we did a fee increase or not at the end of the last calendar year. Um, Councillor Moore or Councillor Pesicini, do you recall? Yeah, there, was a yeah. Slight there was a slight increase, but I don't think it was uh, significant. Okay, my, my only thoughts were that um, I thought we were trying to align with them, so that was um, that was where I was going with that. Okay, thank you. Um, the uh, so uh, sorry I gotta just back up here to water and I apologize I, I missed mentioning this so we did increase our bulk water sales uh, just because you know revenues have been good in the previous years but considering our current water situation in the province with drought um, is that a wise thing to be kind of banking on in this budget um, because. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not in favor of selling bulk water if people can't get drinking water in our communities. So, um, you know, and understanding there may be some restrictions. So I think from a financial point of view, we might want to be a little bit more prepared for that. Um, I don't know if there's any consideration into that or maybe I'm overthinking it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, obviously when we, we set this budget in place, uh, it was a bit earlier in the year and, and we were basing it on actuals and the revenues have been better. 
Um, what I can share is um, um, we are putting together some, some information on, on the drought and, and a water conservation plan um, for us. Um, it's a very good point um, uh, that we'll take away. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I certainly understand where you're, you're coming from, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Chachka. Thanks. I, I do have one more question. Uh, of, sorry, through the chair to um, administration. Uh, one more question of clarity on the water. And regarding that money that is set aside in the utility bill, that $14.50-ish, um, if that money is earmarked for a new uh, wastewater treatment plant in 40 or 50 years um, and we can't spend it on anything else, then um, my question is how much of that of that 1.8 million that we're putting into reserves um, is allocated to that? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I guess I, I don't know if I have an answer to that because I don't think the reserves are set up to say we're allocating this much money to this project. I think it's a reserve that you build and as projects come forward on the capital list for council to consider every year, we, we, we recommend funding sources. So I don't know that it, and, and maybe someone else can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the way it works. I don't know that we collect that money and say, that $1 million is for this project. It's just for the reserve for, for water utility projects or, or sanitary utility projects. I, I do think we have a separate one for wastewater treatment yeah. plant. Uh, yeah, there is, yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, 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 sorry, I misunderstood the question. I thought the rest, the other 1.8 that we're putting in, where does that go to? It's, it's not dedicated to a project. It's dedicated to projects for that, for that reserve. For, uh, through the mayor. <sighs> Mr. Mayor, through the council. Um, yes, yeah, so the wastewater future replacement reserve is strictly funded from the contribution through the utility billing. Okay, so where is that on the budget? So I... I if I could, Mr. Mayor, I think that was just explained by Mr. McReynolds here a few minutes ago. So that's a that's coming through um, rates, utility rates that come in, um, and it goes into that reserve. Right, right. right. So, it's, so it's part of the transfer to reserves. I think is what he what he just said a few minutes ago. So part of the transfer to reserves is that money collected from the utility rates, the utility bills that goes into that reserve. So whatever that fourteen seventy five generates a year, it goes into the 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 re replacement reserve for the wastewater treatment plant. Right. Uh, th thank you. So what, what I'm wondering is how, what is the dollar amount of of that reserve okay. transfer that is gotcha. allocated towards gotcha. that? Okay. Just because I'm wondering how much is yeah. actually I'm left to, okay. to be able to spend on our water infrastructure. So, sorry, I, I apologize sorry. for not understanding Late. the question. So um, I think I'll get happy, uh, Mr. McReynolds, our, our lead answer that. So I'm not sure um, what portion of that one point, but $1 million is going into that, that piece. Go ahead, Mr. McReynolds. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the actual dollar amount is not uh, identified. Um, between the two reserves, the amount of money transferred from that reserve, uh, from that operation to reserve, there is a wastewater treatment plant reserve, and it is uh, significantly funded at this point. I don't recall the amount. I think it's Clayton. Help me if you know. It's like a hundred and one point four million dollars right now. Uh... 1.4, yeah, I can't, sorry, I can't remember, Dave. 2.12, 2, 2.12. There's significant money in that reserve, and maybe I'll just say this, Mr. Mayor. Um, there definitely needs to be a, a little bit of a, a, a review of the reserves and, and how the money transfers to each individual reserve. As CEO uh, uh, talked about um, maybe having some bigger reserves and, 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 not so detailed reserves, and I think uh, uh, GM uh, Paul talked about that last fall, and I think that's a really good um, uh, maybe suggestion that might happen this year. Thank you, Councillor Pasichny. Yeah, through the Merida Council, um, just in the interest of time, it is 10 o'clock. Um, we're really asking questions about minute details. Um, what we have in front of us is a budget meeting on our budget. Um, we have other meetings where we have our discussions about our reserves and what we have in this reserve and what we have in that reserve. We're now talking about the $14 water replacement. Some of the probably is supporting a debenture. Uh, those are some extreme details. Um, we, it's like we, are, we were already off of water, now we're back on water, we're back into reserves. Um, so maybe can we just keep moving along? Um, because 
They're, they've given us a, uh, our previous budget, what we had before. They're giving us our current budget and what we're transferring into reserves. If we want a detailed list of reserves, then make a request to have our detailed reserves given to council ahead of time so we can find out and narrow these things down because every single line we're going into, we're just diving into the reserves. And um, to me, we have numbers in front of us, uh, process the numbers, and we need to, to get through this budget. I just like... We, we, we keep going in circles on reserves and asking questions that our administration are impossible to answer us without pulling up our financials and diving into those reserves. And we do do processes in our, in our council where we sit down and look at our reserves and see how much we have in this reserve and how much we have in that reserve. And that's not on this agenda tonight. So if we could please stay on task of getting through this budget. Thank you, Councillor Pazitchny. Moving on, recycling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So again, this is a, a, a zero balance uh, uh, cost center uh, contracted service through the Evans, uh, sorry, the Edson uh, and District Recycling Society. Uh, again, balanced through some uh, interdepartmental uh, labor charges. All right, thank you. Any questions on recycling? Okay, okay. Uh, moving on to parks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this is the last one in the, the infrastructure and operations uh, division. Um, the new uh, the new department that we took over uh, this year um, so obviously it's responsible for winter and summer programs in our green spaces and parks and playground equipment um, in terms of the budget itself there's an assessment project that's coming off the books um, uh, it was basically all of our assets within our parks that were assessed um, and then some adjustments based on actuals and then obviously again um, the reserve transfer changes are, are noted um, any questions on that any questions, Council? Councillor Chachka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Kitlitz. Um, uh, two questions. Uh, one is uh, regarding the maintenance of the parks trails uh, throughout town. And um, previously we had allocated uh, money to the um, Edson. I'm, I'm not sure if we allocated it to them or if we did it ourselves, um, but allocated money for annual maintenance at uh, the Wilmore Bike Park as well. Um, are those included in this budget? It's under grants to individuals and organizations, I believe. For all three of them, that's 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 included. Yeah, I'll. Uh, Sounds like thirty thousand a year. Oh, actually, I can't because it's not in the details and parks. Um, so I, I'll have to get back to you on that one. So you're asking um, with the Wilmore Park grants to the the bike club there were included in this budget and how much? For the maintenance. For the maintenance, okay. Uh, Councillor Chachka. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Kitlitz, uh, just one more question. So um, at the bottom of the, the very last line, the other transactions, um, it has a water and sewer increase. Um, I just was curious what, what that's about. Yep. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, if you recall, there's a, a, we have a, a, another hangar that's been acquired, and um, that facility now is in operation. And so that's just the, the monthly utility bills for that facility. Okay, I was just uh, informed by Ms. Edigian that there's $35,000 um, for the bike park, but that could just be their grant to the bike park. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Is that anything else on parks? Moving on, community. Thank you, Mr. Kitlitz. You're welcome, thank you. Page 37 of 52. Go ahead, Mr. Wagstaff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I am going to quickly just uh, revert back to the transportation part. I do have the answer for the question that you had earlier. Uh, it was a $76,000 budget line. Um, it's a technical part when you saw that it was tran um, uh, transfer payments. The next line down underneath as it rolls down is um, our grants to individuals and organizations. So in the budget at the next line, it actually is a grant uh, to individuals and organizations. Uh, that breaks down to $50,000 to move Edson and $16,000 for the other expenses that we have occurred. And then there is $10,000 in that budget that helps uh, other agencies in the community that mm -hmm. transport vulnerable individuals like McMahon or Scope. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> with that, uh, uh, through the mayor to all of council. Uh, policing, uh, Edson is served by the local detachment of the RCMP. Uh, 
Uh, Edson has 17 positions with a majority of those dedicated to frontline policing. And of that 17, three of them are for general investigation section. Uh, we have in the town of Edson 4.5 municipal support positions that work out of the detachment. And this is an appropriate level of uh, administrative support for the current needs. With regards to the uh, changes within the budget, uh, based off the multi-year financial plan of 2023 to 2028, uh, we took a look at the anticipated costs of body cameras uh, coming in. Uh, that may or may not occur, but it was something that if it does come forward, it's still in the pilot stages, uh, that it is budgeted for our officers here in our community to be uh, <coughs> equipped with that equipment. Uh, the other increases in there are, again, through that, uh, that multi-year financial plan for some minor equipment replacement, as well as an increase in the officer's wages. Any questions? Councillor Chachka. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Wagstaff, the increase to the wages, is that um, the, the historical wages that they've just had the increase, or is that based on the, the new projected, like they're in... Um, they're in negotiations right now, and I know we got an email last year about, you know, make sure you budget this amount. Um, I think it was 3.5% uh, was what they suggested. It, it is not taking into account any retro pay. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Hmm. Are you done, Councillor Trushka? Oh, yes, sorry, yep. Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to Mr. Wagstaff. Uh, under grants, individuals and organizations see stars, stars Air Ambulance. Mm -hmm. What? Why would that be under policing? Is that my correct? Is that what comes from the Public Safety Initiative? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Wagstaff. The. Sorry, I thought they, my apologies, Mr. Mayor. I thought you had answered the question to yes. the councillor. Oh, oh, continue on with yes. fire. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, fire Department is responsible for fire and rescue operations throughout the town of Edson. The Edson Fire Department currently has one full-time chief and 39 other paid-on-call members, typically referred to as uh, volunteer members, all of whom are dedicated to protecting our community, responding to medical assists, motor vehicle collisions, and fire calls. Our members train weekly, uh, as well as participate in additional training sessions to maintain the highest safety standards possible. Uh, this budget presented reflects historical, uh, historical data. All right, any questions, comments on this? Okay, moving on to disaster. Don't know anything about that. Disaster services and emergency management is in place to work towards eliminating risks and ensuring residents are as safe as possible in the event of a disaster. A disaster can strike at any time. Uh, the town of Edson is continuously working towards making the community as safe as possible through programs like fire smarting, educating the public and training staff to handle a wide variety of emergency situations. This budget center supports staff training, mock disaster and tabletop exercises, funds to begin addressing the areas within the after action report from the fires and floods, including municipal emergency plan update with a contractor, emergency coordination center supplies and education and awareness uh, PR. Thank you. Anything on this? Seeing none, moving on to 911. 911, uh, this is the emergency center uh, providing a one call system for all emergencies that's fire, ambulance, and RC and policing, uh, as well as enforcement services dispatch and prote protective services dispatch. The town is a regional partner with the town of Hinton and Yellowhead County for the 911 dispatch center. The center is managed by Yellowhead County. This partnership provides quality service to our residents as well as supporting our protective services. There is no change in this budget. It's an enforcement services is currently comp uh, comprised of both bylaw enforcement officers and community peace officers. The team helps ensure resident and visitor safety and well-being. The department investigates complaints and proactively conducts investigations related to municipal bylaws and provincial statutes. Um, cur currently, uh, peace officers are appointed under the Peace Officer Act and our staffing 
is uh, this 20, 2024 staffing budget supports two community peace officers. Currently, one is vacant and is filled with, in term with a bylaw enforcement officer until such a time that we can fill it with a uh, certified community peace officer. Uh, no major changes within this budget. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wagstaff. Pretty frustrating. We haven't been able to fill the position. Uh, it's been vacant for quite some time, but I am glad to see that we are uh, utilizing a bylaw officer at least to provide some level of support in this area. Um, any other questions? Uh, Animal Pound? Uh, the Edson Pound is located at the Public Works Building. Hours of operation are 7... 30 a.m. to 4 p.m. They are closed weekends and holidays. There is no sig significant change uh, within this budget. Councillor Schnart. Uh, just a um, fast question on Animal Pound. Do we, has anyone in here figured out the actual wage cost to run in? To, that's what I was curious on this budget amount. I don't say anything for wages. Through Mr. Mayor, I don't think we have a, an exact number, but the, the other transactions um, are some of those are the internal charges meant to cover off uh, running operating of that facility. So if you wanted to uh, drill down into the specifics, we'd have to go find that for you, but I don't have it on top of my head. Continue on, Mr. Wagstaff. FCSS, Family and Community Support Services, is a partnership between the Government of Alberta Municipalities. Edson FCSS provides quality preventative services and programs through internal programming, partnerships with local groups through an FCSS grant program to support non-profit organizations that are delivering programs or events that are preventative in nature and enhance the social well-being of individuals and families <coughs> uh, uh, that are de delivering programs based within the criteria set within the FCSS provincial framework. All FCSS programs or services are designated to positive positively affect the quality of life in individuals and families in the Edson and District. There is an advisory board that makes recommendations on programming and grants are approved by Council. All FCSS programs or services are, oh I, I'm sorry I've repeated that one. Uh, there is a small increase in the revenue from the Government of Alberta FCSS funding of $10,000 as well as there is an increase on the uh, on the expenses with regards to the move to the Griffith Park Centre space so that there's a transfer, which we will speak to later, uh, to ensure that those expenses are attributed to FCSS space. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the Mayor and Mr. Wagstaff, I think you might be alluding to this. So the FCSS funding that we receive here will go help, will that help pay for some of the costs associated at Griffiths Park, such as power, electricity, or gas, that sort of thing, or a percentage of the use of that facility, or was that, or would that be something else completely? So I will be able to speak to more specifics about Griffiths Park Center at the Griffith Park Center cost center, but you are correct um, that that line of uh, of thirty thousand dollars budgeted is for the rental space, and so there are FCSS dollars attributing to that office space. Oh yeah, that was my next question. Okay, so yeah, we use we we call it rented. We're almost renting it from ourselves, essentially. Okay, thank you. Correct. Um, so I have a question here. I see elder abuse program that grants to individuals and organizations. Is that? Um, and I see that's an increase. Um, so is provincial grants covering that off or is that going to be taxpayer supported? That $10,000 that you see in the grants in the re uh, revenue line above is directly uh, attributed to an increase in the programs that we are granting out. Okay. So, um, cause I know we've, we had this discussion before we were part of a pilot project, the province cut the funding. So we cut our funding. I don't want us, and I, and I at least my position is uh, this is a provincial responsibility, so I have no problem with it uh, from my perspective if we're getting a grant or the province is helping cover that. Uh, but I don't think this is a municipal responsibility to be covering uh, a program that was launched by the province, which then they ended up downloading to us. Um, but that's just my perspective. Councillor Taylor. Uh, this was spoken about at the last FCSS uh, advisory committee meeting and the FCSS board 
really said unanimously that they were supportive of it as a uh, as something necessary in our in our community. Uh, uh, yes, the province may not supply it, but doesn't mean that that we shouldn't, and doesn't mean it doesn't happen within our community. So. Uh, I can I can speak on sort of behalf of the, the board, uh, and it was unanimous. They are supportive. It's necessary. They say that it uh, they they see the they see el um, elders within our community uh, reaching out, uh, and they need that support. So um, yeah, they're uh, this yeah fully supportive of the SCSS board. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Taylor. Uh, well, I, I, I certainly respect that and understand that, and I don't want to beat a, beat this up too much, but, uh, and I, certainly elder abuse is a huge issue, um, and we see a lot of different things happening towards our seniors. Um, I guess, what is this program? What is it going to be providing? What's it going to be doing? Um, this year, you were, we're now adding uh, an increased level of service and I have no details on what that is. Uh, and I know it's a small amount of money, but uh, it's my job and our job here around this council to understand where, what's happening here. Um, so I guess I would like to get further details on what that means. To the, to the mayor and all of council, uh, certainly we will be able to provide a, a more detailed listing as, as to what those programs are. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to public health. Public health, attracting and maintaining a solid number of physicians in our community touches on nearly all aspects of Council's strategic plan, most specifically creating a connected community that is safe and inclusive. In 2011, the Town of Edson purchased the Edson Medical Centre to help maintain a stable work environment for doctors. The Town of Edson and Yellowhead County partnered on the purchase of a home in 2012 to help provide transitional housing for medical professionals as they relocate to our community. The town worked with the local doctors group on updates to the medical center lease to help reduce the overhead and align costs with current market values. This budget reflects that, re that recent action to sustain the medical center operations. Council, any questions? Councilor Chachka. Um, sorry, uh, through the chair to uh, administration. Um, my question is regarding the reserve transfer. Um, in the building maintenance reserve, there's, and may, I'm not sure if this is the right area, um, it's showing that we do have a reserve transfer um, and that we have a reserve transfer of $60,000 going into the building maintenance reserve from the medical center. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering why, what, what, what's the deal with that? Mr. McReynolds, are you able to provide uh, more information on the reserve transfer? I'll, I'll just dig in the end to find that information. So I, um, while he's looking, I'll, I'll continue further with the question. Um, so, and, and I, I guess my interest in that is that the building maintenance reserve doesn't have an optimal balance. Um, so I'm just wondering why uh, the medical center, why there's a medical center um, transfer going into the building maintenance reserve. Um. Sorry, this is not policy. It is part of a, an agreement, and maybe I'll pass it along to CEO Bear and uh, Christine to maybe comment on that. Go ahead, CEO Bear. Mr. Mayor, through the council, I'm trying to remember exactly. I know it's part of the agreement. I'm just trying to remember exactly where because it was specific when we brought this back to council for discussion. So I just need a moment if we can. Why don't we uh, find that information and we'll get back to that. Uh, moving on to anything else under public health. Community Services Administration. Community Services Administration provides support for administrative services, leadership and management for the Community and Protective Services Division. This budget also supports efforts in addressing the homelessness strategy, education and awareness regarding truth and reconciliation calls to action, and the Town of Edson Community Development Microgrant Program. Budgeted expenses previously approved by Council for the operation of the Warming Centre for January to March of 2024 of this year have been included in this budget. OK, 
Okay, any questions on that? Griffiths Park. The newly renovated Griffiths Park Centre building houses the community development and FCSS offices. Griffiths Park Centre is a community space for Edson and area residents where the community development team delivers regular programming, utilizing a small gym space, a commercial, commercial kitchen, and multi-use rooms supporting programming for all ages, which encompasses the preventive social services, arts, culture, active living, and special events. Hosting programs and services in one general location, that is easily accessible to the public. Residents have the opportunity to visit whether for programs or for information and referrals to social preventative services within the community, active living and cultural programming opportunities. The budget center shifts from being used as a renovations budget center to being utilized as a standalone cost center for building operation expenses that are offset with FCSS charges as a revenue. Any questions? Seeing on moving on to League Center. Oh, sorry, just uh, back to Griffiths Park. Um, when we did the opening of the building, um, I noticed a lot of families that were trying to access the building uh, with their strollers, and there's, there's no ramp from the bottom parking lot up to the top. Is there any plans to address that in, in some fashion? Um, because there is limited parking on the side of the building where uh, people... Uh, park um, as well as it was noted that the uh, internal ceiling tiles we use the old ones um, in order to save some costs in the renovations if we were planning on fixing or refurbishing that just to make it clean it up a bit uh, thank you mr. mayor uh, I can address both of those through the mayor to council uh, with regards to the ceiling tile uh, tiles yes there is a, a grant that was applied that is in this uh, budget uh, I apologize I didn't point that one out so you'll see 25,000 for soundproofing grant that will go on the tiles uh, and uh, in some of the areas of, of the building um, and that was a government of Canada grant that has come come through uh, with regards uh, to the accessibility from the lower parking lot, that is correct. It has been no noted. Uh, there are no plans in 2024, but it is something we are looking at in a capital budget request for 2025. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, to the mayor, uh, to the mayor, um, just looking back to your moats, just going back to the elder abuse, uh, and I'm sure there's more elaboration that we made here, but from what I wrote down from the meeting back in January, we discussed it. Uh, I have, um, and this may be, this is probably not all the funding, but the training to our staff to provide support for victims of elders, uh, elder abuse. That is what I have. I'm sure there was more under that that Mr. Wagstaff will be able to fill in, I'm sure. But that's, just wanted to bring that to your attention. So. Okay, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Moving on to the Leisure Center. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To all of Council, through the Mayor, uh, the Edson District Leisure Centre features two ice surface arenas, uh, an indoor swimming pool, a concession, and a hospitality room. As a community hub for recreation activity, the Leisure Centre strives to offer affordable programs and services committed to supporting a healthy, vibrant community. The Recreation Department is responsible for booking Vision Park ball diamonds and soccer fields, and the Edson and District Leisure Centre is home to a Junior A hockey team, the Eagles, many adult hockey teams, Edson Minor Hockey, a figure, the Figure Skating Club, and the Orcas Swim Club. The pool features a five-lane swimming pool with a deep, and, a deep and medium end as well as a shallow play pool. The hot tub has been permanently closed and this facility is going to be under renovations shortly, anticipated with the Yellowhead County Edson uh, Leisure Centre, or sorry, multi-purpose centre. Uh, the current leisure center offers a multi-purpose room which will continue after the renovations that seats approximately 40 people comfortably. The arena is used uh, in the fall and winter for ice rentals. Arena staff shifts seasonally to parks, maintaining a minimal staffing for dry floor use during the spring and late summer. This budget has been adjusted to reflect historical. Councillor Taylor. Uh, through the mayor to probably Mr. Wagstaff, I know we were doing a review of the uh, fees uh, with the Leisure Center, wondering whether we'll, we'll, when we have sort of that report complete and we, uh, we can look at uh, reevaluating fees and certainly, you know, we're, we're, we're getting into the spring here and if we wish to reevaluate fees prior to 
like hockey AGMs, we really need to have that information probably soon. At this point in time, uh, we're not changing those fee, anticipating changing those fees. We're in the final stages of the RC Strategies report. Uh, right now, there's a final loop back to the user groups. So currently, uh, and I think, it, I think it closes off next week, um, the user groups have sent out to their members uh, to be able to give us some feedback on that so we can close to the final stage where a report to council will be forthcoming. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Chachka. Thanks. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Wagstaff. Um, in the Leisure Centre budget, I know um, a few years back we, uh, council kind of talked about um, increasing a fee slightly to this um, in order to, so, so we, I think it was for the tax implications, so we would not have um, such a, a big increase, you know, the year that the facility opens. Um, have we thought about doing that um, or... Um, or, or do we already have a, a small fee increase? I, I can't remember if we did it uh, or not. No, we have never done it because we were always waiting for the review to be done. So that review is being done. Oh, okay. Um, so I think that's, yeah, okay, okay. I think that's what we were kind of waiting for uh, to get a better understanding of the whole picture. Okay, um, I, I thought it was, so um, I, I, I guess the, the fee increase would be what the tax uh, implications would be um, for operating the, the new facility or, or it was for the debenture. That's what it was for. We talked about increasing the fee so it would offset the debenture. Um, uh, no, it was not up, not, not necessarily offsetting the, uh, not the fees, but actually having a slight increase on taxes right. in order so that buffer wouldn't be so great okay. when we actually borrow the money. But I think we're still a couple of years away from borrowing the money for for construction. Okay. But we haven't built that buffer. We haven't done anything yet. I don't believe so. Okay. No. Okay. Thank. You. Unless administration, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've ever included anything. Right. Um, you know, Mr. Wagstaff? Community development is located in the Griffiths Park Centre and encompasses coordination and delivery of programs and events in active living, arts, culture, and FCSS support. The programs are in, and events are often enhanced by a strong collaboration with various community partners and volunteers. Community development supports residents to feel more connected to the community by facilitating volunteer opportunities and programming and events while working with community partners. Examples are the Explore Edson directory and a staff support as well as providing staff support to Youth Council. Activities driven from this budget include supporting and offering programs and special events that encourage community connectedness and enhance the quality of life for our community. Delivering or supporting mar marquee events like Family Day Unplugged, Volunteer Appreciation Week, Eddie's Big Run, Seniors Week, Canada Day, Renaissance Fair, WAP May Day, Cultural Days, among others. <clears throat> there is no significant change uh, and there has been some adjustments to actuals. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Uh, through the Mayor to Mr. Wagstaff, um, I, I'm asking this on behalf of the Youth Council. How much is in their actual budget? Uh, one of some, a lot of the kids always ask, you know, how much do we have budgeted for this? And we look at each other and go, hmm, good, great question. Uh, and a lot of these kids are very math adept, so they would like to know numbers so they can figure out things. I will uh, double check on that. I believe their budget was within the, the council budget, but we'll, I'll get back to council and be able to uh, supply that information. I do recall there is money there for professional development in terms of doing an event uh, where they could either go see a speaker or something like that uh, in their budget. Uh, but it's been when I was on youth council, it was impossible to get that organized, and that money was never spent. And then there's money in the budget as well, uh, a small amount for the meetings, for the food and uh, clothing, and then there is also for the bursary as well. So, uh, but I don't recall what the amount was. I want to say it was 15000 but I'm not 100% on that. Count yeah, the, 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 and just through the mayor, to the mayor they, they just <coughs> like to know, uh, honestly, they're the kind of group that loves to budget, and they just want to know how much they can to do events and things like that. They want to know how much their seed money is. And uh, it's been just discussed a few times, and I just really don't have an answer. Right? So, okay. Thank you. Uh, through the mayor to... Uh, Councillor Taylor and all of council. Uh, I will pass that along. This particular budget does support 
the staff member that helps provide support to to that group, uh, not the not the uh, youth council's budget itself. Uh, however, I will pass that note along to bring that to the youth council through the staff member. Um, to continue along, Mr. Mayor, uh, um, through the Mayor to all of Council, supporting culture, supporting a vibrant cultural experience, many organizations provide entertaining and educational opportunities for residents and visitors alike. Annual grants to ECHO, Edson Cultural Heritage Organization, which is the Red Brick Art Center, Edson Historical Society, which is Galloway Station Visitor Center and Museum, as well as the Edson and District Library Board. There are minor increases to their requests in this budget. Uh, the 2024 budget also includes a previous grant council approved for the Yellowhead Ag Society towards construction of their new arena for $300,000. These activities of these or the activities of these organizations translates into a strong sense of community pride. The town of Edson supports these endeavors to increase these opportunities for the expression and celebration of arts and culture in the Edson and district. All right, anything under culture? I do have one request uh, through to administration, and it um, is at some point. Um, I find it really difficult to get a clear understanding, like how much the library is costing us, how much. Um, the Galloway Museum is costing us to have that information maybe broken down a little further as per what organization. Some of these are funded very heavily by uh, the town of Edson. Um, so when somebody asks me how much are we giving to the library, I, I can't pull up the budget and tell them, and that's I, I think that's a little difficult. And I think the public should also have a clear understanding of how some of these cost areas are, are going, whether that's um, um, you know a separate document with all the grants going out. Uh, if you don't want to change how you have the the budget set up here um, I just for the transparency piece of, of this um, if there's anything nothing else under uh, culture uh, property taxes and requisitions thank you mr. Wagstaff we're almost done thank you mr. mayor it, it got on to me So property taxes and requisitions, uh, there's a 0.5% increase in uh, the property taxes based on uh, reserve policy. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, there's an adjustment to franchise fees uh, based on historical actors. The increase in uh, sharing uh, agreements uh, through 2023. And a removal from reserve, which is not through policy. So uh, on that, uh, Mr. McReynolds, so um, through your review of our budget, we were transferring uh, $410,000 last year. That wasn't a part of any policy that was uh, approved by town council. Yes, that is correct, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, any questions on this? Continue on. Uh, the requisition budget is uh, adjusted to what we actually uh, incurred in 2023. So um, we have not received the requisitions for 2024. So this budget is based on the 2023 actuals. Okay, thank you. Council, any questions? All right, I think, uh, do, I don't think we need to go through requisitions um, unless there's something to note. Hmm? Oh, okay. Um, so with that, um, we will take, if there's no other questions on the budget, we will call the question to approve this information um, as presented and then if anybody has any additional motions uh, any adjustments they want to make to the budget we can do that then uh, go ahead councillor Moore uh, do you have a question uh, no it's already moved it's already moved yeah. so oh. mm -hmm. You're not okay um, so uh, with that I will call the question 
Council accept the introduction of the 2024 operating budget presentation. Please vote now. All right, and that motion is carried unanimously. Uh, do we have any motions coming from the budget presentation? I'll give you guys a few moments if there's anything that you want to bring forward. Uh, and while we uh, give people a second to collect their thoughts, I uh, just want to thank uh, everyone involved in this budget process. Uh, Mr. McReynolds, uh, all of our general managers, all of our managers, uh, CEO Beverage, uh, and uh, yourself as well, our finance manager. I, sorry, I forgot your name. It's <laughs> um, for all your hard work and uh, dedication. There was a lot of work that went into this this year. Um, so really do appreciate that. Is there no other motions? Go ahead, Councillor Chachka. Uh, thank you. Uh, through the chair to uh, council, um, I would make a motion that we um, change the 300,000 uh, that was listed in the uh, elections uh, reserve um, to $10,000. Uh, 3,000 to 10,000. 3,000 to 10,000 um, that was listed um, with the election uh, reserve uh, policy to bring that reserve to the optimal balance for the next general election. All right, so Ms. Veerboom, can you put that motion on the screen for us, please? Thank you. If I could just get control of the screen share, please. Thank you. And let me know when you can see that. Now uh, we can see that. So we have a motion uh, that says the council direct administration to increase the reserve transfer to the elections reserve in the 2024 operating budget to $10,000. Is that what you're looking for, Councillor Chachka? So Councillor Chachka has moved that. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns on this? Seeing none, I will call the question. Please vote now. That motion is carried unanimously. Do we have any other motions? Councillor Chachka. Um, I'm uh, through the chair to council. I, I move that we um, increase the policing budget of 3.5% um, of wages as per the Alberta Muni recommendation in July of 2023 for the April 1st, 2023 budgeting of policing costs for 2024 due to their negotiations. All right, uh, Ms. Veerboom, did you get all that? Um, sorry, through the mayor to Councillor Chachka, if you could just take a peek at my screen and just let me know I caught the first little bit of it there. As per the Alberta, uh, okay, as per the Alberta Muni recommendation, in July 2023 for the April 1st, 2023 budgeting of policing costs for 2024. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor is this the, the policing contract? That is correct. So they're currently under negotiations for a new contract. So the one that's been approved was all retroactive up until 2022 or 2023 and now they're under negotiations again and there's going to be retroactive pay for 2020 2023 uh, that will probably hitting uh, hitting us in the future so um, Councillor Pasichny have a question comment or concern yeah through the mayor um, we don't pay wages we pay a contract so I'm not sure if that motion is correct <coughs> Because the, it's a wage increase for that to amend their contract, but we're not negotiating that contract. The federal government is, so I would not be anticipating a three and a half increase to our policing co price or, or contract. So yeah. I don't know if it's for the whole contract. That's why I don't. I don't know what the wage portion is of the contract. Maybe that would be better. I think I think it would be under the three point five percent increase of the policing contract, because the. Uh, 
other wages include our civil servants and other uh, costs associated with that. Um, our CEO beverage, uh, we have some thoughts on that. So Council Precision is correct. It is specifically for wages, which we have a contract for the service of RCMP. So I'm just that I don't think that is an accurate motion um, because that's super five percent on our whole total policing contract. Yeah. So that's I, I, well I, I yeah, that. you're you're correct. So that I think I think what we're looking for here is that council increase the um, the the police officer. Uh, costs by 3.5 percent. Uh, okay, just give a minute. Yeah. The mayor, is that more accurate? We'll just hold on one sec. We'll just wait for CO beverage. I do, uh, I, if uh, council, if I may, I would like to speak to this. I think this is a prudent thing to do so we don't get caught with a massive increase uh, once the decision is made on what that's going to be. We're not necessarily in tune to the day-to-day -day negotiations, um, and we, I think we need to be prepared for that. So um, count, uh, we can also maybe direct administration to bring that forward in the next revised budget. That might be the simpler thing to do. Councillor Prasichny. Yeah, I'm just going to speak my beef as usual through the mayor to council is uh, I find it very frustrating that the federal government feels it's appropriate to deal in contracts retroactively um, as we have a bargaining agreement with our employees you generally make a decision today for the future not for the past um, so um, again I'm just making my statement that the federal government should be eating any retroactive costs that they're negotiating but I know it falls on deaf ears but I'm just making my point because it's very frustrating Agreed totally. Councillor Taylor. Uh, through the mayor to, to council. You're, you're preaching to the choir there, Councillor Positioning. Absolutely. Um, just so we want to increase that portion of the op because we don't know where it might fall at the end of the day. Could be 5%, could be 2%. Right. And I, th I think it's prudent. I remember seeing the, the, the letter, the data back in July. Uh, I agree that we need to at least prepare for it. Um, is, is this the best place for it or is it putting into a reserve and, and waiting, uh, and then we have it there? Does it matter? Uh, so if you don't mind, if I can speak to that, uh, yeah, I, I, it's more prudent to do it as a part of your budget because it's built in to your budget. Otherwise, if it's in reserve, it's still not built into your budget. You just put money aside okay, and then you still have to build up that, that piece, uh, moving forward. So, okay. um, I think it would be appropriate to do it uh, in the budget, but I think to make this simple and easier is just to direct administration to bring back um, an increase to the policing budget in relation to the Alberta Muni's recommendation in July 2023 in the next draft of the budget. All right. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, it is late, and I'm just wanting to make sure that we don't have a motion that we that is not. What? Not something we can achieve, and, yeah. and that it's and it's an incorrect motion. So I'm sorry. I'm so that council direct administration to bring back an increase of the uh, policing budget as per the recommendation in the July 2020 uh, July 2023 Alberta Municipalities letter. Does that work for you, Councillor Chachka? All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, questions, comments, concerns. Seeing none, please vote now. I'm trying to give Amanda some time to get her. <laughs> so and what's he gonna do? Motion carried five to one. Next motion. Any other motions? All right. If there's no other motions, I will take a motion for adjournment. 
Councillor Chouinard. Yes, I gladly give a motion for adjournment. Thank you. Please vote now. That motion's carried unanimously. Thank you to everybody who's toughed it out with us. Have a good night.